Okay, hey, hey, Jelly Toast here, back with more DGS Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Uh, still continuing case two. I have a feeling that this um, session will also be just investigating the whole time, and maybe next time will be the trial, but we'll see. I wish we hadn't been thrown out like that. I wish we managed to find some clue as to what that speckled band might be. It's probably a collar. We didn't manage to investigate it at all, and I imagine that we won't be able to for a while longer. We'll never get past that sailor guarding the door. He's clearly glaring at us, as if to say, don't even think about it. Oh, wait a minute. What is it? Well, what happened to our great detective friend? Where did he go? Oh, yes, he's completely disappeared. When did he do that? He slipped away as quietly as the wind, but not before ensuring these were securely back on my wrists. Mm -hmm. Am I examining more? Can I talk to him? I really wish we had a chance to look around in Miss Pavlova's cabin. What? Why you look like that? You want something? Hmm? Maybe you want me to throw you out again, hmm? Oh, no, no, definitely not that. Next time I have to throw you out, I show you where lobsters spend winter. Understand? Understand? Maybe I should steer clear of him until he's forgotten my face. Okay, so no more talking with him. Hey, Nir, how you doing? Thanks for joining! Happy Thursday! I'm still trying to get used to Tuesday, Thursday, um... Uh, stream days, but how you doing? I'm finally playing DGS! Woo! I don't think he'll ever forget your face, naruhoto san Then do I just go back to my room? No voice acting? Um, no. Except for the um, exclamation points? Like, yes, no objection. No voice acting. Okay, then I'll just move. Back to my cabin. Maybe he's in the grate? It looks like they're still investigating in here. Yes, on that subject. I wonder if Inspector Hosonaga is unscathed. What do you mean, unscathed? Surely you haven't forgotten, have you, naruhoto san Don't you remember what he said about allowing you out of this cabin to investigate? He was going to talk to the captain about it. He said he'd lay his life on the line for you. Oh, yes. But I'm sure he was exaggerating. Let's see what he has to say for himself. He might have some new information for us. You never know. Well, Hosonaga's not here. That's not Hosonaga. Oh, Hosonaga's over here. Oh my... He got beat up. Ah, you're back. Inspector! What happened to you? Your faces! Uh, why are my eyes so itchy? Please, don't worry about it. They're just scratches. Made by a bear, maybe? When I told the captain that I'd given you permission to investigate, he told me he'd pummel me with his fist and then toss me overboard. What? But the pummeling was over in a flash, and he must have decided against throwing me overboard. So it was nothing, really. It looks like he wasn't joking when he said he'd lay his life on the line if he had to. Well, thanks to your efforts, we now know a little about the neighboring cabin. Yes, so I understand. Oh! I bumped into a man claiming to be a great detective a little while ago. I think his name was something like Erlock Herlock Scholz. I don't think he was German, though. Ah, that explains it. Shall we compare notes then? We can tell you what we found out. Yes, let's do it. The cabin next door. What? Nikolina Pavlova? She's in the cabin next door? Oh, do you know who she is? Please, what self-respecting ballet fan wouldn't know that graceful angel? <laughs> Oops, I think I upset him there. Well, that tells us the neighboring cabin is unrelated to the case at least. Oh, how? Because angels don't go around committing crimes, do they? <laughs> Oops, now I've definitely upset him. 
Inspector, has your investigation here proved useful, fruitful? If I'm honest, there's very little more I can do. Our duty is to make sure the scene isn't disturbed, ready to hand over to the Hong Kong police. So I'm just keeping watch here, trying not to take my eyes off the job. Oh, I see. Ah, there is one thing. I do have a small piece of new information for you. Oh? What? Yes, do tell us, Inspector, please! Uh, new information. <laughs> what is this new information you have, Inspector? It's this. The Buria medical... The Buria's medical officer has finished his examination of the body. I managed to obtain the report. Oh! Kazuma's post-mortem report? Kazuma-sama. So, what was the cause of death? Damage to the cervical vertebrae is what's written in the report. His neck was broken? Yes, it would seem so. There were no obvious wounds or other signs of injury. So at first, I think they were considering poison. But it turns out they found no trace of poison in the system at all. Well, what weapon was used then? Nothing has been found as yet, but the fact that there are no signs of a wound suggests it may have been a blunt object, something that wouldn't leave a mark. Wouldn't it have bruised? Oh, I see. All the body's nerves run through the spine to the brain. A strong enough impact to the neck could induce death. But if he got hit with a blunt object, that wouldn't have given him time to write a message on the floor, right? It is a possibility, and no obvious wound would be left. Poor Kazuma. I have a second copy of the report. If it might be useful, you're welcome to have it. Really? Are you sure? Yes, it's fine. I trust you. After all, if I didn't trust you... I'd never have agreed to you leaving the cabinet in the first place, would I? Ah. Yes, Susato, he trusts me! The post-mortem report has been entered into the court record. Um, cervical spine injury? No external injury or poison? And there was no mark on his body? Really? Like, what does it say exactly? Uh, male Far Eastern sometime between 1 a.m. and a little past 2 a.m. Cause of death, damages or instant death, almost broken, certainly. Result of strong blow to area, okay. No traces of poison. Great detective. Oh, Mr. Schultz here, was he? Yes. He seemed to be enjoying himself a little too much as he crept on the, about on the floor investigating. But then he suddenly left. I suppose he must have become bored. Did he say anything at all? Actually, now that you mention it, yes. Just one thing, but he practically shouted it. It's shoe polish, was all he said. Shoe polish? I wonder what he meant. It was when he was over there, by the bro piece of broken glass, do you see? So that mark is shoe polish? Ah, uh, perhaps he was talking about this brick-colored mark, do you think? Ah, uh, yes, that must be it. But how can Mr. Scholz know that it's shoe polish? Hmm, that leaves me cold, I'm afraid. I have no idea. What is it, Susato-san? Well, Kazuma-sama was wearing leather shoes with a very dark tan hue. Dark tan? A sort of dark brownish red, then. What? Color is tan in your world! Tan is more like brown or orange. Yes, a little like the color of red wine, but darker. I often repaired them for him. Then that's not tan, that's like maroon or burgundy. The heck? Oh, does this mean that this mark was made by the polish on Cosma's shoes as they scuffed on the floor? The mark on the floor looks like a scuff made by Cosma's shoes were found by the big. But if you look at the outline on the floor, the scuff mark is by where his knee would be. That's really- I do not understand this. That's really all I can tell you at this stage. I should return to my post. My fellow crewman's eyes are boring into the back of my head. Yes, that may be for the best. Thank you. 
Poor inspector, you look exhausted. Oh, no. Well... I feel terrible that I failed to protect Asuki-san. He was my responsibility. Of course, my pain is nothing compared to yours. You were his friends. The truth is... I seem to have a heavy head ever since I woke this morning. A heavy head? That's interesting. My head's still throbbing too. So we were gassed somehow! Yeah, because I have a heavy head. He had a heavy head. That's why none of us, like, hear anything? Um... Wait, why is this a new thing? It's not- this it doesn't have a check mark. Um... Hey Kirby, how you doing? Thanks for joining! Happy Thursday! Have this cat, Miss Awesome Toast. Oh, thank you! Um... So here are my theories that I thought about while, um... <clears throat> while I was thinking about this. I think... Herlock Scholes isn't as dumb as he shows he is right now. I mean, I think he's dumb because all Ace Attorney characters have to have some kind of weird quirk. But I feel like he's more intelligent than he's letting on. And I feel like he's just trying to test us to see how good of a in, like detective lawyer we are because we found a killer to um, Wilson's case in the first case. And so I think he's gauging us and testing us to be like, oh, can you help me find the real killer? And then for Kazuma, I'm just hoping he's not dead. I hope he'll just pop out somewhere. Because there are clearly no marks of poison on his body and they said blunt object. So he's like, maybe you're faking it. But then the whole crew, it, it would be hard to have a whole crew play along. So let's just examine this. But I just hope Kazuma comes back. It really is such a beautiful color, this glass. It looks like whatever it was broken clean in two. Uh, but the other half is nowhere to be seen. And then there's this brick-colored mark. Which is shoe polish, according to that great detective you seem to know all about. I suppose it must be from Cosmos... Whoops, I missed it. Cosmosama shoes. Maybe, but what I'd like to know is, how can a detective be so sure that it's shoe polish and not something else? Because he's a great detective, of course. That's hardly a reason, is it? Oh my gosh, that is a huge cat arrow. <laughs> so it's clear that these letters were written with the ink that was somehow spilt on the floor. And they spell Russian word for wardrobe. It does seem to be an unambiguous pointer to you, Naruhura-san, as you were sleeping in there. But to be truly unambiguous, it should have just spelt out my name, don't you think? Well, either way, one fact remains. It's hard to imagine that Kazuma-sama would have written his last words, or word, in Russian. Which begs the question of who did write it. I think it was the crew. The crew is up to something. They're hiding something other than the ballerina. And I feel like this bell, it looks like it's a bell that's broken was possibly from Nicolina's um, pets that crawled through there, whatever. Do I have to examine the desk again? This is where Cosmo spent his final moments writing in his diary. 1.23 a.m. I can hear a faint whistling sound. 1.35 a.m. What looks like some sort of speckled band is dangling from the ventilator grill. Looking at his writing here on this page, it's almost impossible to believe that he's gone. cosmo sama left us a valuable clue in these words. I'm sure of it. We have to solve this mystery, Naruhura-san. We will. Um, okay. So this ventilator joins the Miss Pathlova's cabin. Yes, that's right. And just a few minutes before he died, Kasuma saw something emerging from it. The speckled band, as he described it. If only Miss Pathlova had been able to shed some light on it, but she seemed as baffled as we are. Yes, I wonder if she's telling us everything, though. I'm not sure. I know most people aboard would say the same about me, but there was something about that woman that didn't sit right with me. Yeah, that she wouldn't show her pets! Um, do I have to examine the bookcase again? All the books provided for passengers occupying this cabin neatly arranged on the shelf. They were all over the place when we first looked around, if you remember. Oh yes, and you tidied them up, didn't you? You have to look at the ship's 
Um, property. Unruly behavior in the cabins lead to damage. But it really wasn't me who knocked them over. Well, anyway, I feel much better now that they're neatly lined up. I can't relax when things are untidy. Okay, so thinking back on this, when I first... Before she tidied the shelf, everything was leaning like... Oh, it's opposite for you guys. But it was leaning like this. So, like, the bent arm of the statue was, like, on the shelf. But when we went to Nicolina's, I feel like it was tilted the other way? Because other... There has to be some kind of significance as to why the things on the shelf are knocked over. But, like, nothing else on the boat has been knocked over. Hmm. That's Kazuma-sama's precious sword. He never went anywhere without it. Yes, he was always saying that a Japanese man's katana, Japanese man's katana is his soul. I believe he had to- Oh, uh, whoops, I skipped it too fast. I believe he had to work very hard to convince the government to allow him to bring it on this trip. I suppose that shows just how important it was to him. And now he's gone, but I'm not ready to let his spirit go just yet. Uh, chicken, tablecloth, thing... Do I have to talk to you? Um, you! Where did you go? Oh, sorry, I just went next door to- Why? Uh, who gave you permission for this? Um, well, it's, but I mean, Seaman Hosonaga did. Hmm, that new Japanese, was it? Later, I will roll him into ball and throw him in cold room. Phew, he's gone back to guarding the door. I hope Inspector Hosonaga doesn't find himself in too much trouble on our account. He's really gone out of his way to help us, hasn't he? When we get back to Japan, we'll have to take him for a steak at La Carnival. That could be a very long time for now, Maruhora-san. Okay, well, he's back in here. Um, am I supposed to inspect something else? Am I supposed to show things to people? I think I have to examine this thing again. These are the rules of passage for travel aboard the SS Buria. Passengers must not keep weapons or other dangerous objects in the cabins. Pets are also strictly forbidden. So by bringing her pet on board, Miss Pavlova has broken the rules. She called it her friend, didn't she? Yes, although we don't know what form of this friend takes us yet. I'm almost certain that whatever it is, it's inside the traveling case in her cabin. You don't say. Hmm, a friend. There's more to this than blah 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 blah. Um... Mm hmm Okay, I'm going to move back to first class. Cool. So I think I just had to talk to Hosonaga and then come back out. Whoopsies. Ah! Look, Naruhoro-san! Seaman Stroganov has gone! Strong enough? The burly Russian sailor who's always crossing his arms and glaring at us! Ugh, all these Russian names are impossible to remember. Tra-la-la. -la. Did you hear that? It sounded like someone singing. Tra-la-lira-lira-le. I did it the great detective way. <laughs> oh no, it's gonna be, um, Sherlock. It's caroling. I know that lark-like voice. Well, never mind that now. This is a golden opportunity for us. Yes, you're right. We must seize it. Let's get inside Miss Pavlova's cabin while we can and investigate. Definitely, before that stringy knot crewman comes back. It's Stroganoff, not stringy knot. Pavlova! Hey, Smooth, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Thursday! Oops. Okay, never mind. Everything is knocked over the same way as on, um, as in Nicolina's room. Miss Pavlova isn't back yet. Susasatan, oh, where's she gone? Hey, what are you doing? Those are her private things. There's not a moment to waste, Naruhoto san. We must investigate as quickly as we can. I suppose you're right, for Kazuma's sake. Not just for Kazuma-sama. What do you mean? It can't be long now until we arrive at port in Hong Kong. 
I don't want you to be in those handcuffs when we get there. Really? We must solve this case, Naruhoro-san, by ourselves if we have to. Yes, we will. Well, I know one clear thing we're gonna examine. The case! Oh my! Miss Pavlova's case is open! It's completely empty inside, but according to the great detective's great deduction, she was hiding her special friend in there. Yes, a friend that she had to keep secret. Because you're not allowed to bring animals aboard the SS Burya. I wonder what kind of animal she had in there. And more to the point, where, did it, where is it now? You can't look in the case for, like, fur or anything for real, guys. <sighs> What's this? Naruhoto-san, are you there? Sorry? I'm right here, yes. Why? Oh, good. I thought you might have climbed into the wardrobe when I wasn't looking. There's no place like home. Believe me, I don't have some strange compulsion to jump inside every wardrobe I see, you know. Well, anyway, I'm not sure anyone could fit inside this one. It's full of beautiful outfits. I suppose they're all stage costumes. Hmm, I was rather hoping we might find Miss Pavlova's friend hiding in there, but no such luck. Okay, I meant to check the bag, but I guess that was just part of the, um, wardrobe. So this ventilator connects to Kazuma's cabin next door. Yes, although what a fool ship- wait. Although what a fool a shipbuilder must be to open a ventilator into another room. Ah, maybe. It's so that there's if there's a gas leak next door, the occupant of this cabin would notice and raise the alarm. Or, the occupants of both cabins would die of gas poisoning. Hmm, that is a possibility. Anyway, last night, Kazuma wrote that he saw a speckled band coming out of this ventilator. So the, I think the whistle was like, um, hey, signal the pet to come out and go through this grill. I mean, this ventilator. Dish. I wonder what this little saucer is doing on the floor. Yes, it doesn't look like it's been dropped. More like it was put there deliberately. Huh, do you think... Do you think there could be a leak in the roof just above here? What? A leak? Is this ship quite safe? I'm... I'm sure that even if there's a little leak in the roof, it doesn't mean the whole ship is going to sink. No, no, you're right. Of course you're right. She's really trying to persuade herself, isn't she? How about that saucer was for her pet friend, huh, guys? Guess what, JT? What, Regal? Also, how you doing? Thanks for joining! Happy Thursday! There's just a few books on the desk, nothing else by the looks of it. Well, Miss Pavlova only ran away from the ballet last night. She's hardly occupied this cabin for any time at all. That's true. I wonder what kind of books she likes to read. Also, guys, the tiara is gone. Hmm, let me see. Yes, yes, I see. It would seem that Miss Pavlova enjoys reading... Books written in Russian. Thanks. I think I probably already knew that. It's rude to ask too much of people, Naruhoro-san. Kindly remember that. Uh, I guess I'll just examine this because it's here. It would seem this teapot is empty. Hmm. So the natural conclusion is that the Russians are a very thirsty people. Or, because Miss Pavlova only came into this cabin last night, she hasn't had the chance to make any tea yet. I mean, it could be either. It's simply that they're excessively thirsty. I'd lay a thousand to one on it. You're rather obstinate, aren't you, Naruhoto-san? But yeah, I think the whistling was a sign to be like, Hey guys, let's like engage with the plan. And then he saw the pet. And then he died. I suppose every cabin has a waste paper basket. Shall we have a little look and see what's been thrown away? Naruhoto-san, it's poor etiquette to go sifting through someone's rubbish, you know? Ugh, those eyes. She's looking at me like I'm a piece of rubbish now. However, these are special circumstances, I think. Exactly, we have no choice. There's hardly anything in here at all. Oh, well, that's a little disappointing. I got all the mounts for the birds and 14 and the dogs. Oh my gosh, congratulations! Oh shoot, I just got an email saying that the uh, Make It Rain event is going to end soon, so I really need to jump back and go to the um, Golden Saucer. I just finished the first episodes in the, the Phoenix Wright trilogy. Nice! How do you like it? Isn't Phoenix Wright crazy? 
All the books have toppled over together. Look, every single one. Do you think that's the God of the Sea, perhaps? He's toppled over too. Uh, it's exactly the same as the bookcase next door. In Cosmos' cabin. Perhaps... Perhaps this Tavlova was practicing a difficult ballet pose and fell against the bookcase? I don't know. Would she really be practicing ballet on the same night she ran away from her ballet company? Alright then. It must have been you. You lost your temper and knocked him over in a fit of rage. Not everything bad that happens on the ship is because of me, you know. Well, anyway, I'll set them all straight again in here, too. I don't like seeing things in dis- No, stop! Don't touch it! Why? Why did she touch it? No! She's ruining the scene of the crime. Um, I don't think there's any... Do I have to examine this again, too? There's one of these next to the bed in Cosmos' cabin, too. Yes, it's a bell cord. I can't resist. She barely hesitated there, and she gave it a good tug, too. No, I didn't actually expect anyone to come. We don't want them to! We're trying to investigate in secret! Okay, I think the last thing... Okay, I'll just read this. Display in the cabin too. Passage. Good pets. Uh, her special friend. Pet. Where are they? Exploring the ship. Uh, I just hope Seaman Stroganoff doesn't find it and throw it overboard. Oh, yes. So do I. Do I examine the door? This cabin door has the same simple sort of bolted latch that our cabin door has. If the bolt's drawn across, there's no way anybody could enter the cabin from outside. Yes, it's not a particularly heavy-duty bolt, is it? But still, it wouldn't slide across of its own accord, would it? No, and the door is made of metal, so there's no chance of trickery using magnets to unbolt it from the outside. What? <laughs> would it? Would, because it's metal, wouldn't the magnet pull it? I don't know. And it seals up perfectly, too, to stop any seawater coming in. So you couldn't use the method you told me of passing a thread through a crack around a closed door, either. I seem to know a lot of tricks for opening doors. I'm starting to see why they suspect me. Put this on my wish list. Heck yeah! Wait, but then if I play it, it'll spoil for you. No! What did she give a good tug? She gave this, um, bell thing a good tug. I think that's all I can investigate in here. Like, they're not looking for any fur in the case, which I'm like, why aren't you? Okay, so I think I have to leave. Okay, I think I have to go to my cabin? If nothing shows up, then I have to go back to... Yep, okay, I'm missing something in um, Pavlova's cabin. Otherwise, because otherwise a, a dialogue thing would have popped up. So what am I missing? What am I missing? What am I missing? Oops, I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to! I didn't mean to! By the time I get it, I won't remember the details. Oh yeah, true. Because even though I played all the Phoenix Wright games, I don't remember the specifics of the cases. I just remember the general um, gist of the story. Especially Phoenix Wright 3. I don't remember anything from that game. Okay, I examined that. I examined that. Nothing up there. Examined the desk. Nothing on the wall. Mm. I'm going to finish the other one first. Mm. What did she give a good tug? This this cord! She gave this bell cord a tug! <sighs> Let's see, court record? Am I missing anything? Mark on the floor. Post-mortem report. All of these are done. Okay. Maybe I'm missing something in my room. What about the people? Hmm... Okay, no. No, I, I legit looked at everything here, so I gotta move. Uh, 
I don't like the way you move the cursor up and down the cord thing. Well, that's what it looks like. It's... It goes up and down. Uh... Oh! That's what I'm missing. He's right here. Oh, it's Mr. Sholmes, look! Wow, you never know where he's going to turn up next, do you? He seems to be stealing a look at something as he sings to himself. Tra la la, leery leery, -le, I did it to great detective work. He's still singing. Do you think he hasn't noticed us? Or he's simply in extremely high spirits? Yes, there were times I'm sure you knew when the yard bit off more than it could chew. And through it all, when there was doubt, it was like a herlock was about. Um, excuse me. I solved it all and I stood tall. I did it the great detective way. Mr. Shows! <laughs> ah! What is it? You want to fight? Hmm? Honestly, interrupting a fellow when he's singing, and I was just about to reach the climactic finish. Sorry, I thought you were never going to stop, so I figured now's as good as in it. Ah, now is as good a time as any. I very nearly dropped you to the floor with one of my famous right hooks. Alright, I get the picture. Now could you put those fists away? I could do that too. Look at me go. I'm a boxing pro. <laughs> Pasta check. Wait. Mr. Sholmes, how many looks does it take to get to the center of a tissue pot? You seem to be examining something before we interrupted you. Ah, oh, yes, that. I was immersed in this. Uh, ah. Why can't I read these lines? I was missing. I was immersed in study of the ship's log, as penned by the stockily built crewman who's usually on guard here. Oh yes, the ship's log. And did you find out anything useful from it? Well, after 2 a.m. this morning, the majority of the entries are blank. Which means that there was nothing to report. Nothing of note happened, so... <laughs> you truly are a student from the land of the rising sun. You've been utterly blinded by it. <laughs> Sorry? Your logic, my boy, is inverted. Whatever do you mean, Mr. Sholmes? Observe the other pages and all shall become clear. It would seem the same crewman oft stands sentry in this first class passageway. And he has an almost religious practice of recording nothing to report every half hour. Oh, he writes that in every 30 minutes? Nothing to report? Precisely. Put simply, the seaman writes nothing to report when there is just that. And yet, the ship's log from last night is largely blank. He didn't even write nothing to report. Do you mean... Yes, there were circumstances afoot last night which led to the seaman being absent from his post. What kind of circumstances? What happens? That remains a mystery for now, but we can be sure something significant took place. So significant that it caused the seaman to forget his regular habit of scribing nothing to report in the log. These are important details. I would stake my life on it. You must log the ship's log in your mental file. The ship's log has been entered into the court record. They sure are drawing a blank here. <laughs> Good one, Grunt. Also, hey, how you doing? Happy Thursday. Now that deduction was worthy of a great detective. Ah, oh, you're starting to understand why, what my way is, I see. What makes Sholmes Sholmes? Brilliance. <laughs> oh, ouch. What is it? Are you hurt? Oh, don't worry yourself. I seem to be afflicted with a throbbing head this morning for some reason, nothing more. We're all afflicted with throbbing head. Well, my friends, until our next encounter. He's still singing to himself. I can hear it as he wanders down the passageway. Is something wrong, Susan? So you seem lost in thought. It's just... Well, I feel the same. Sorry? Ever since I woke this morning, I've had something of a headache. A sort of continuous throbbing. Oh, you too? Oh, is that it? Okay. I'll go back to my cabin. <laughs> oh, cute kitties! Okay, I guess not here. Unless there's something else to inspect in, um... The hallway. Nope! I was right. Ding a ling a ling a ling a ling a ling Ah! What's that? 
Shut down the engines immediately! Vessel sighted a quarter mile for! Full stop! Art to starboard! All hands, brace for impact! What the? I think we're about to crash into another ship! What?! I... I can't stand! Susatsu san, hold on to me! Wah! Achy toast. <laughs> Susatsu san, are you alright? Are you injured at all? I... I think I'm fine. Thank you, Naruhoto san. Everything is in disarray. It looks like we avoided a collision. I think... Yes, the ship has come to a stop. Oh my goodness, what about you, Naruhoto san? Are you hurt? No, I'm fine. Hello? Is anybody in there? Shout it if you need assistance. Oh, that sounds like... Inspector Hosunaka. Is that you in there, Naruhoto san? Unbolt the door, quickly! What? The bolt? Look at that. The door's bolted. Did you do that, Susanoo san? No, I didn't touch it. Well, that's strange. How did... And look at all the books. They're just like they were before again. That's how the room locked. Someone came into the room. They left. And then they... And that's why all the books were knocked over. But nothing on the desks were knocked over. Which is curious. naruhoto san aren't you going to open the door and let the inspector in? I'd better tidy this place up first. Our violent emergency stops had solved one mystery at least in a very vivid way. But I knew that what awaited us on the other side of the cabin door would not be pleasant. I hurried around tidying up the cabin with a new sense of foreboding in my heart. To be continued, whoa! Okay, so that was short investigation. Save your current progress, yes. I have yet to complete a trial with full health marks. I hope nobody got tilted from that ordeal. Ha 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 ha. Somehow, the door to the cabin we were in ended up bolted after we made an emergency stop. Susatosan took a deep breath, then gently slid back the bolt. You! What are you doing in Miss Pavlova's quarters? Ah, uh, you both look unhurt. Good. Yes, we're fine, thank you. What on earth happened? We heard something about how we were going to collide with another ship. Yes, it appears to have been a false report, though. Oh, how did that happen? There's a dense fog outside, so it's extremely difficult to see. Someone must have thought he saw a ship ahead. This person obviously triggered the alarm, and that's why we made an emergency stop. Everything is chaos. Passengers are screaming. Crew are running everywhere. This first class area is the only quiet part of the ship at the moment. Oh, I see. Someone triggered the alarm? Does that mean... That someone pressed that button outside? Ah! Oh wait, it was her. You, you wicked intruder! Dressed all in black! You are the devil! Sorry? Me? I've been called a lot of things before, but devil was the first. You opened my traveling case! How could you? What? No, no, we didn't touch it. That's right, Miss Pavlova. It was already open when we came into your cabin. Inspector! Um, yes? Arrest this man! I know he did it! He's a criminal! It is not enough that he has killed a man! Da! And he has stowaway as well! If Vixen promises not to steal chicken, do you believe? Uh... Take him away! He's a trespasser as well as everything else! Stowing away, trespassing, killing! She is right, you are devil! It doesn't look good, does it? There is cell below deck, throw him in! Tomorrow we talk in Hong Kong, then we give you straight to police. Wait, a cell? Please, Inspector Hosunaga, is there nothing you can do? This is a Russian vessel. I really have no jurisdiction here. After my last effort to appeal to the captain's good nature, I think I'm out of options. This is terrible. This is a real crisis. I've got to find a solution. 
immediately. Uh, what? Can I talk to you? You both look unhurt, the hurt guy. At least he cares about us. You are devil. The inspector needs to inspect better authority. <laughs> get out! Listen, I'm sorry that we snuck in here without your permission, but get out now! We just need to investigate here to help understand what happened to... <laughs> oh, it's no use. She's not going to listen. I need to find someone who will. You. You've got yourself into a difficult situation here. By entering this cabin uninvited, I mean. Sorry, I, I was just so desperate. Blah, blah, blah. I'm afraid there's really nothing more I can do to help you. If I push my luck any further, a punch to the face will be the least of my worries. I'm really sorry. I have to take responsibility for giving you the freedom to investigate Miss Pavlova's cabin. Now that this has happened, I'll have to report to the captain at once. I really need some help here. I need a savior to rescue me from this crisis. Is it gonna be Stroganoff? Or Susato here? <laughs> what the heck are you doing, Sholmes? What the? What are you doing up there? He has the tiara on his head. Oh my gosh. Mr. Sholmes? Naturally, I was analyzing what a weight of 20,000 rubles feels like on one's head. Have I not told you that as a detective it is my business to know what other people do not? This isn't mere tomfoolery, my boy. Oh, no, no. Um, well, why were you we hanging from that hook before then? Isn't it obvious to properly assess the weight of the 20,000 rubles, naturally? I wish to determine if it would bend that conceited looking hook on the wall so full of brag and bounce. Ah, I never know whether to take this man seriously or not. Ah, you again, the great detective. Ah, Inspector, I confess I've been looking for you. I have something to report that to you most urgently. Well, you might try looking for me somewhere other than a hook on the wall next time. What is to report? Speak! An urgent report from a great detective can mean but one thing. Yes. The case of the curious murder that took place last night here on this vessel, the steamship Buria, has been solved. By me, naturally. What? Really? Yes, I have eliminated all possibilities. No other explanations exist. So, allow me to illuminate all your minds. For I am about to reveal my great detective's greatly admired great deduction to the case. Is it deduction time again? I actually like the deduction time. Ha! You have solved it! Even Hedgehog understands this case. We all knew who was responsible for killing student boy this morning when we found criminal in wardrobe. It is his stowaway, and he has handcuffs to prove it. I didn't do it! The trouble is, there doesn't appear to be anyone else who could have killed the victim. Because, as everyone knows, the cabin door was bolted shut from the inside. Great use of the word great. Greatly done, sir. <laughs> Sholem's music at the beginning kind of sounds like bibbidi bobbidi boop. <laughs> Bibbidi babbidi boo. That means the culprit must be someone who was inside the cabin. Yes, it's what's called a locked room mystery in detective stories. Da! Locked room! That is point! The room was locked. Well, I can't deny that. There's no way the bull could have been drawn across from the outs outside the cabin. You are all quite mistaken. The cabin next door. Is not a so-called locked room at all. What? Oh yes, there's another entrance. An entrance used last night by the culprit in order to gain access to the cabin despite the bolted door. What other entrance? We never discovered one. Why, it gives open mouth at you even that we speak. The ventilator, man. The ventilator? Ha ha ha! You think this is funny? I cannot even put my arm through the hole! That's because you're a freaking giant. That's because your arms are as thick as tree trunks. <laughs> you're suggesting that the culprit entered and left the victim's cabin through that tiny opening? It's not possible. Ah, but it is. And last night, the victim even witnessed the intruder in the act of passing through the ventilator. It's you, Nicolita! Mr. Sholmes, what do you mean? 
Are you referring to the words Kazuma Sama wrote in his diary? 1.23 a.m. I can hear a faint whistling sound. 1.35 a.m. Oh, speckled bands! Precisely, my dear madam. But what does it mean? What is the speckled band? The answer to that particular conundrum is in this very cabin. Mr. Sholmes, what are you doing? There is a distinct element of danger, but fear not, I am ready. What I am about to expose for you all to see will shock you to your cause. Behold! Ah, uh, what, what the? It's a snake. Snake, a snake, it's a snake. Allow me to introduce you all to the band, the speckled band. Oh, that's why when this case started, there was a snake in the drawing. Oh, uh, a snake, indubitably. But how would a snake be a pet in Russia? Like, it would be way too cold for the snake. I'm moving too far back. I'm gonna, like, leave my camera. Um, Mr. Sholmes, just one thing. Pray, what troubles you? Well, that snake isn't really speckled, is it? It looks more stripey, wouldn't you say? Hmm? Yes, you're right. I think in this case, you'd have to call it... The Striped Band, wouldn't you? <laughs> you both see and observe with distinction, however. Do you not think that this is precisely the trap into which the culprit wishes you to fall? Oh my goodness, really? It's... it's a trap? It's a trap! <laughs> How exactly? I think perhaps it is time I explain the intricacies of my train of thoughts. Are you ready, Miss Pavlova? I'm sorry for the young man who died, but that is all. His death has nothing to do with me. This whole thing has nothing to do with me. There are two conclusions I have drawn from the facts. Number one. Last night, your friend infiltrated the victim's cabin. Ah! And number two, that same friend was responsible for the victim losing his life. No. He's turned as white as a bowl of rice again. Sholmes must be right. He's hit the nail on the head. Is it the snake, Kirby? Is it the snake? This young woman's friend killed Mr. Asogi? <laughs> he can't talk. It looks like he can't speak with that snake coiled around his head. I would advise as little movement as possible, semen. <laughs> you wouldn't want the fangs of that long friend in your neck. So everyone, let us begin. Herlock Sholmes is proud to present his logic and reasoning spectacular. Let us deduce! The great deduction, the game is afoot! Intruder's identity. Miss Pavlov- Oh shoot, I missed it! Oh no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Ah, I went too fast. Miss Pavlova, moments ago you claimed the following. His death has nothing to do with me. This whole thing has nothing to do with me. Yet you cannot deceive yourself. Yes, when you recall those horrid events, your aching heart smarts with pain. Uh, more like her hand, because she keeps holding it. And it is that very pain that evidences your inextricable link to the victim's death. So we ask, what was the nature of this intruder that stole into the victim's cabin on that portentous night? Why, naturally, it was the friend in which you boarded this vessel, was it not? Uh, as I suspected, other the telltale glance. Wait, why does his necktie look like a fish? Without doubt, your friend is the writhing serpent we see before us. And yet, that leaves th uh, the fact leaves us in a quandary. The victim's written observations on the night in question tell of a speckled band. Whereas, regrettably, this specimen's markings do not fit that description in any way. 
What explanation can we give? Then give, pray. What was the sign that fell upon the victim's eyes last night? No, don't look at me. This has nothing to do with any of this. Oh, but it does. You have the answer to this quandary even now, hidden behind your back. Oh! Yes, that which you are trying but failing to conceal can only be the snake's slouch skin or her scarf. Evidently, after the sudden and horrible crime, this most deadly friend of yours... Shed its original skin. No. I... I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, wait. Wait a minute. Did she come into Kazuma's cabin thinking it was her cabin, but then she saw him in there and she was like, Oh, shoot! Wrong cabin! And she, like, knocked him over and then she climbed up onto the wardrobe to go through the ventilator to go back into her room? Is this too much? Am I just trying to, like, connect thoughts out of nowhere? But, well, I don't know. Last night, through the ventilator visible in this cabin, you th your then-speckled friend slithered next door. Using the bell cord on the other side as a bridge, the serpent silently descended into the victim's quarters. In the dim light, it appears uh, to the young gentleman who was about to lose his life as a speckled band. In summary, the nature of this friend of yours, which last night infiltrated the scene of the crime, is a rare breed of snake whose markings change each time it slows its skin. A snake so dreadful, we can only imagine it would be found in the deepest depths of India. No, but... A beloved speckled snake. No, but if he saw the speckled... He wouldn't have seen it through the ventilator. If, he, if someone clearly came into his room, he would just be like, Yo, someone barged into my room. So, that's not right. Bad theory, ignore it. Cyberpunk holds and sailor with fish ties. <laughs> it does look like a fish, doesn't it? Necktie seems fishy. <laughs> Moving on, we come to the heart of the matter. The grim demise of the victim. How did this young man lose his life? And why? According to the data of which I have been apprised, it would appear that there were no signs of visible injury. Ah. In fact, the circumstances of the victim's death can only be explained by a terrible venom. But there was no poison. Now if we take that aspect... We can reasonably imagine that there remains evidence to affirm that at the scene of the crime. Oh no! Could there be... Yes, an examination of the deceased's body will prove the cause of death conclusively. The almost but not quite imperceptible puncture wounds left by the venomous fangs will seal the truth. Yes, the vestiges of the snake bite delivered by your terrifying friends. This... this makes no sense. There is no point feigning ignorance, Miss Pavlova. After the incident, you endeavoured to hide everything, didn't you? But now your involuntary glance betrays the hiding place you chose. That's right, you hid the evidence that links you to the victim's death in that travelling case. When we first met in this cabin, it came to my attention that your case moved periodically. Your serpent assassin was breathless inside, no doubt. You... you don't... It is telling that the victim made note of a low whistling sound that he heard minutes before his end. That was your signal, was it not? The sound you had used to train your serpent friends. To... train? Indeed, you'd put the serpent through this ventilator and wait. After a period, you'd summon it back with a whistle. You couldn't know if the animal had done its duty, so you would listen for signs of life next door. If the victim appeared not to have been dispatched, you'd release the snake once more. Do you deny the snake had undergone such training? It's not true! Having slithered through the ventilator and down the bell cord, the creature needed only to stick its fangs in once. And its venom would course through the victim's veins, ending his existence forever. That is the true nature of the speckled band that took the poor young man's life. There can be no doubt, my logic is infallible. The fire venomous snakes bite, but there was no sign of poison! 
and no marks on his body. Thus concludes Herlock Sholm's great deduction of the speckled band. My turn to deduce. Yo, I never noticed, but you can see Stroganov's belly button. Ha 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 ha. Miss Pavlova has trained her pet snake as a killing machine. There on the floor, you will observe a saucer of milk. The promise of food is the key to training any creature. Incredible! You've solved the mystery! Amazing! Your great deduction really lives up to its name. I see now why Herlock Sholmes has become such a household name. My dear man, it was nothing remarkable. As the Russians say, I could have done this with one left hand. Um... Could I venture an opinion, Mr. Sholmes? Oh my gosh, is it her turn to deduce? Please. But of course, what's on your mind? It's just, about your deductions before, some things don't quite make sense to me. I welcome questions as to my method, and will answer both loudly and proudly. Oh, well, good. First of all... Snakes are egg-laying creatures, part of the reptile family. You are well informed, madam. And reptiles, um, don't drink milk. Ah! <laughs> it's really only mammals that like to drink milk, you see. So, I'm not sure it would be possible to train a snake using milk as a reward. No matter! No doubt Miss Pavlova used some other treat to encourage her pet to do her bidding. Milk was merely an example. The logic holds. Well, there is something else. Snakes have no ears. Ah! <laughs> yes, so I'm not sure it would really be possible to signal to a snake by whistling. But madam, what of the tales from Arabia? Have you not heard of the snakes that dance to the sounds of a flute? I think perhaps the performers play their music in time with the snake's natural movements. Oh, I see. No hands, no feet, no ears. These creatures are so inept as to practically as to be practically useless. Don't take it out on the snakes, Mr. Sholmes. Um there is one other thing. You have more Snakes use a scale on their bellies to propel themselves. So I'm not really sure that the snake can manage to climb up a flat bell cord like the ones in these cabins. Then it should try harder! Please, don't be angry with me, Mr. Sholmes. The point is, even if the snake had gone through the ventilator to the next door cabin, it couldn't have come back without help. What I'm trying to say... ...is that there are a number of reasons why it's difficult to imagine the snake could have had a part in this. What do eggs have to do with anything? Snakes have ear holes. Right? I thought snakes have ear holes. And yeah, I thought more that the snake being a reptile living in Russia was more of a problem. Because it's like, I don't think snakes can survive in Russia. I think... We need to step in and help again, Mr. Naruhodo. Oh no, you don't mean... Yes, we need to modify Mr. Sholm's latest deductions and turn them into the great ones they ought to be. I had a feeling that was coming. Alright, let's give it a try. Just what I was waiting for, Mr. Naruhodo. Yes, right. Just what I was waiting for. So, cast your eyes down to your wrists again. What? You've done it again! Your handcuffs are gone! Where did they go? Fear not, I shall see that they're restored after our work is done. I really wish you'd leave them off. They're like sensitive to vibrations, aren't they? Snakes? I don't know. That I don't know about snakes. Did Miles Edgeworth go insane and become detective? <laughs> no. Also, this takes place like, um, I think, 100 years before Phoenix Wright does. So this is a prequel game. Oh, they don't have ear holes. Okay, I don't know anything about snakes. Now everyone, let us begin. Herlock Sholmes is proud to present his Logic and Reasoning Spectacular. Course correction. Hold it, Mr. Sholmes. Mr. 
Miss Pavlova, you claim the following. This has nothing to do with me, yet you cannot deceive yourself. Yes, when you call those horror fans, your aching heart smarts with pain. She does have a pained expression on her face. Yes, that's true. She looks as though Kazuma-sama's death is weighing heavily on her mind. But you're not sure Mrs. Sholmes has read her quite correctly, is that it? Could there be some other way to interpret her expression then? Let's take a moment and really look very closely at Miss Pavlova. It's her aching hand! Hand, 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 hand. Aching heart. Claw scratch! Claw scratch! So it isn't a snake, it's a cat! And the speckled band is a collar. Yes, when you call those hard events, that claw scratch farts with smarts with pain. Indeed, and simple observation reveals that the wound is fresh. Miss Pavlova, did you in fact receive that scratch? Sometime last night? Ah. When I think about the young man who died next door, I feel so sad. And when I am sad, the pain from this wound is worse. And it's the very pain that evidence is an inextricable link to the victim's death, so we ask what was the nature of portentous night? Why, naturally, it was the friend in which you boarded this vessel, was it not? Uh, as I suspected, it's telltale glance. Without a doubt, your friend is the writhing serpent you say before us. It's the fish necktie. It seems likely that the scratch mark on the back of Miss Pavlova's hand was made by this friend of hers, doesn't it? Except, snakes don't have claws, do they? No, they don't. They don't even have hands or feet on which claws might grow. Well then, if that snake isn't her pet, what is? What's the true identity of this friend of hers? We should follow her gaze, Naruhoto-san. That's where we'll find the answer. Her pet is his midriff. Aha! Pho photograph frame. What? The photograph frame has a picture of a cat in it! You're looking over this frame photographic print, weren't you, Miss Pavlova? But let's not be distracted by the print itself. Oh no. It's a frame that. Because it so beautifully displays whatever you put inside it. What precisely was your intention with that, Mr. Naruhodo? It's following the natural progression of the deduction, sometimes the truth hurts. Well, the truth is, you do not have a turn for observation or deduction. That hurt. Yes, a lot. Uh, it's. Uh, there's a cat in the freaking photo! Look at this graph. I can't tilt up or down. I don't see a cat anywhere else other than the photograph! Wait, there's something else highlighted. Teapot? No. Writhing Serpent's Demon Stroganoff. Teapot. I think you have to press A on it first, examine it. I can't! I can! That's so stupid! There was no option to exam- <laughs> Look at this photograph in this frame. This must be something Miss Pavlova brought with her when she ran away. She is exceptionally beautiful, isn't she? Yes, that's true, but personally, it's a little black creature she's holding that's caught my eye. Maybe we'd be better to take a closer look at this. Oh my gosh, it's a cat! That's so stupid. There wasn't the A examined in the button prompts. Yeah, that's so stupid because I could clearly tell from the picture it says it's a cat. So if I just present the photo, you should just be like, let's look closer at this thing. It's a cat. Oh, I lost the point of help because that's so stupid. Without doubt, your friend is this little kitten we see before us. Yes, the scratch on the back of your hand makes that abundantly clear. Oh no. The whereabouts of this black kitten isn't clear, but what is clear... Oh! Look at the thing hanging on its collar! It's half of the bell that's broken off in Kazuma's room! 
is that you brought the animal with you when you ran away, didn't you? Ah! Darka is my best friend. I couldn't leave her behind. Hmm, Darka would appear to be a Russian blue. And yet, that fact leaves us in a quandary. The victim's written observations on the night in question tell of a speckled band. Whereas, regrettably... This specimen's markings do not fit that description in any way. What explanation can we give then, pray? What was the sight that fell upon the victim's eyes last night? No, don't look at me. There's nothing to do with this. Oh, but it does. You have the answer to this quandary even now hidden behind your back. Yes, that which you are trying but failing to conceal can only be the snake's last skin. Did you see that? She just took something out of her pocket and hid it behind her back. If she just left it in her pocket, no one would have ever known. Oh yes, ploys like that are Mr. Sholmes' specialty. He's ever so cleverly forced to reveal something. I thought deduction was a specialty. Or maybe making me believe that was a uh, was ploy too. Anyway, I find it hard to believe that's the skin of a snake. In which case, just what is Miss Pathova hiding behind her back? Whoa, 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 uh, uh. A knife! A knife? A knife? No, uh, do I have to press A on this again? Well, it is speckled and it is a band, but... What is it? It seems to be soft and fluffy. Uh, something to the end. That looks like a handle at one end. I think it may be a cat's toy. This sort is common in the West, apparently. How's that a toy for cats? Cats like to chase the band around and paw at it. Kittens in particular love that sort of play. You only need to wave in front of them and they pounce to catch it. Haha, <laughs> that sounds positively adorable. It's a cat's toy. <laughs> Let me see what you have in your hands that you're clearly trying to conceal. Yes, the thing you are trying but failing to conceal is um, a cat's toy. Precisely, and the true nature of the now infamous speckled band. Ah. And it was this toy that you dangled through the ventilator. You waved it around, I presume. Naturally, the victim could not fail to notice it. But why? For what reason? My dear boy, there can only be one answer to that. After her feline friend disappeared through the ventilator in the neighboring cabin, Miss Pavlova attempted to use the speckled cat's toy to incite the creature to return. Ah. In summary, the nature of his friend of Miss Pavlova's, which last night infiltrated the scene of the crime, is a blithesome Russian blue breed of cat by the name of Darka. <laughs> Let me see. What you got there, buddy? A knife! No! I like that he paused there. Ha 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 ha. Pun pun pun. A truly troublesome feline. Young Darka is proving to be. She must be caged once found. You will forgive us for borrowing the photograph of your pet, Miss Pavlova. The photograph of Miss Pavlova and Darka has been entered into the court record. And along with it, the picture of the tiara. It was after I gave her her food last night. That's when it happened. She scratched the back of my hand and then ran up the bell cord. Before I could do anything, she had disappeared through the ventilator. Darka, she is so naughty. And now we find out the truth about the murder! How Mr. Oz... <laughs> I can't believe he's dead. Moving on, we come to the heart of the matter, the grim demise of the victim. How did this young man his life and why? Quarter to data, which are no visible signs of injury. In fact, the circumstances of this victim's death can only be explained by a terrible venom. What Mr. Shulman says is true. There were no signs of a wound anywhere on Kazuma-sama's body. That's right. But Mr. Sholm seems to be unaware of one very important detail. Kazuma wasn't poisoned. Yes, it would seem so. Let's give him the information he's missing now. 
Uh, 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 presents. Post mortem report. In fact, the circumstances of the victim's death can only be explained by the post mortem report. Ah, oh, yes, I knew it was one or the other. This necklace. Indeed, the breaking of the cervical vertebrae, vertebrae is fatal. Only that Goliath would be strong enough to survive that. Seaman Stroganoff isn't some immortal freak, you know. <laughs> the jury is out. Anyway, we have on good authority that the victim's neck was broken. Now, if we take that as fact... We can reasonably imagine that there remains evidence to affirm it at the scene of the crime. Oh no, could there be... Yes, an examination of the deceased body will prove the cause of death conclusively. Cosmo died because his neck was broken. In other words, he was probably struck by something, or someone. Yes, that's a distinct possibility. As of yet, no weapon has been found, though. Presumably, Darko hadn't, didn't silently creep up behind Kazuma and deal him a fatal blow. I suppose... It's possible that he had a fall and hit the ground awkwardly. It could have been a terrible act of misfortune that he broke his neck completely by accident. Oh, yes, a bad fall could explain it. It's rather hard to believe of, of Kazuma-sama, though. He wasn't a clumsy man. Hmm, well, we need to fix this deduction somehow. Is there anything from the scene that could explain what happens? And that's why there's a scuff mark on the... present. Mark on the floor. Yes, an examination of the mark on the floor will prove the cause of death conclusively. This particular mark, so prominently visible next to the victim's body, is a deposit of shoe polish. Shoe polish? Indeed, positively identified by a little analysis device I constructed, which I carry now as a matter of course. Beeswax, tallow, and dye were my results, the undeniable ingredients of shoe polish. That was a nice little transition. And the color of the polish is a perfect match to the color of Mr. Asogi's leather, laced leather shoes. Huh. Looking at this mark, it's not hard to imagine what happens. For some reason, Mr. Asogi must have caught his foot at the point on the floor and tripped. Please, no. And by a dreadful turn of misfortune, caught his neck against some immovable object as he fell to the floor. Suffering a fatal blow to his spine, the victim's vertebrae shattered, and in that instant, he lost his life. No! But then how did he write wardrobe? Something still doesn't add up. I don't know. I don't know anything about this. Is that really true, Miss Pavlova? What about the evidence left at the scene where Mr. Asuki lost his life? Yes, the facts are as clear as day, day to me. You did all you could to conceal the incriminating evidence. But now your involuntary glance betrays the hiding place you chose. That's right, you hid the evidence that links you to the victim's death in that traveling case. I don't believe it! Cosmo Sama merely tripped over and, and now he's no more? It can't be true! I refuse to accept it! So do I, man. I know it's hard to believe, but the mark on the floor does seem to suggest that's what happened. But... And if this part of Mr. Shaw's deduction is right, Miss Pavlova is trying to hide some evidence that would prove it. Here in this cabin, somewhere in the direction that she just cast her eyes. Where, I wonder? Let's have a good look around. The answer must be here somewhere. Can I, like, peek into the traveling case? Or, like, is it in a trash bag? This is a waste paper basket. Perhaps all the first class cabins have them. But Miss Pavlova only started occupying this cabin late last night. Presumably there's not much rubbish in there yet. Oh, well, what do you know? Oh, what's that? It's a broken piece of glass, isn't it? Yes, it is. And I feel like I've seen it somewhere before. If it looks familiar, perhaps it's more than your mind simply playing tricks on you. Who's that? Did you play Re Near Inc Reincarnation? No, I haven't. I kind of want to, but I also kind of don't want to because it's a mobile game, and I don't really want to play mobile games. Even though it is a near game, I should play it. That's right, you hit the evidence that links you to the victim's death in that waste paper basket. Ah! Here we have a fragment of some intricate glass object, it would seem. One that has a familiar air, in fact. 
Precisely. We found another piece of broken glass on the floor in Mr. Asuki's cabin. And, as you can see, the two pieces fit together perfectly. Oh no. So, Miss Pavlova, shall we consider what this tells us? Why would it be that part of this glass object, which was evidently broken at the scene of the victim's death, should be found in a waste paper basket in your cabin? You're well acquainted with this glass bell, are you not? I... I don't... I don't know, in that hushed Russian accent of yours won't save you this time, dear girl. Why? Because we have conclusive evidence linking you to the bell in question. What? Take it away, Mr. Narukoro. Um, yes. The evidence linking Miss Pavlova and this little glass bell, that would be... Look at this photograph! My if you look at this photograph, you can clearly see, hanging from Darker's collar, the very glass bell in question. I... The truth has caught up with you, Miss Pavlova. The young man who lost his life last night did so after a truly inauspicious fall. And the cause of the fate of full stumble? Your absent feline friend, Darka. You caused Kazuma to die, how dare you. I still refuse to believe that he's dead. I couldn't... I couldn't tell anyone. I'm sorry. Oh, so it was either her or one of the crewmen who wrote Wardrobe because obviously Kazuma doesn't know Russian. Deduction complete elementary! Why didn't you tell us now, Miss Pavlova? Tell us exactly what happened last night. It was a little after one in the morning. It was so late, but I hadn't had time to feed Darka, so I gave her some food. And then, all of a sudden, she scratched me and jumped out of my hands. People do say that cats become very anxious and nervous in new environments. She was so fast, she disappeared through the ventilator before I could stop her. And that is how you acquired that rather nasty wound on the back of your hand, I take it. Yes, and I had read the, um, rules on the wall. I knew that I was not allowed Darka with me. Yes, modern science suggests that animals can carry infectious diseases. It's a precaution, really. So I listened and listened, trying to hear if there was some noise at the next cabin. It was very quiet. I was sure if someone was there, he must be sleeping. So at that point- wait, so at that point you thought it safe to try to lure the kitten back again. By dangling the end of the toy through the ventilator and into the adjoining cabin. Darko always loved his toy, but it didn't work. Nothing worked. I tried using her favorite toy. I tried whistling to her softly, but nothing. She didn't return. So the faint whistling sound Cosmo wrote about in his diary was Miss Pavlova trying to retrieve her pet. Cats have a propensity to remain hidden in the shadows when frightened. Yes, so there was nothing else I could do. I just had to wait until she had calmed down. But then... I... I nearly passed out with shock. I heard her cry out, and then... Oh, it was such a dreadful bang! Then afterwards, nothing. It was totally silent. Cosmo was... From the appearance of the brown mark on the floor, it seems likely that what you heard was the victim stepping on the glass bell and tripping up. The SS Buria is a large vessel, but even she can pitch and roll violently without warning. If Mr. Asuki was already off balance as a result of the ship lurching when the kitten got under his feet, the combination of unfortunate factors could easily have caused him to fall over. But what became of the kitten afterwards? In the end, I managed to get her to come back through the ventilator. 
Yet Taka is nowhere to be seen. I must have forgotten to lock my case. And now she's disappeared again. Gracious, that cat is as insufferably restless as I am. Well, he knows something about himself, at least. When I woke this morning, I heard that a young man in the cabin next to mine had died. But I couldn't bring myself to tell anyone what had happened. So you're just going to let an innocent person be framed for murder? I was too scared. Scared that they would send me back. Oh, hold on a minute. What about the snake? You're right, where is it? If the snake isn't your friend, Miss Pavlova, then whose is it and where did it come from? What on earth is such a dangerous creature doing on board the ship? It's his snake, that's why he has the marks on his face. Oh, I didn't say? Snake is my friend. His name is Pirosko. Huh? What? What? Posture check. That snake belongs to you? He escaped from cage when the emergency alarm sounded. I was looking for him. I did not expect to find him in here. Yes, how did that snake get into this cabin? But animals are not permitted on board. Ha! We are at sea for one year! You want to be so long with that close friend? Without someone who understands? Couldn't you find someone a little more human who understands you better? But my dear burly fellow... A gargantuan venomous snake? Surely you can appreciate the danger you're putting everyone in? No venom. Huh? Pirosko does not have venom. He is harmless. Very long, but very gentle. He is adorable, like Granny. It's... Venomless? Yes, now he is hungry, so he is in bad mood. But once I feed him, you will see big spires. And you feed him what? Milk, I suppose? Ha! Like they say, the milk chickens? Ridiculous. Snakes that drink milk are only in stupid stories. Piroshko eats mouses. Big, fat, round mouses. Ah, oh, so is that what the mouse trap in the passageway out there is for? Of course. How else can I catch my friend's favorite food? Nothing says top of the food chain like that look in their eyes right now. It refuses to drink milk. It can't hear a whistle. It can't climb up a bell cord and it's not even venomous. How the deuce did something so inept land a starring role? Is not my fault. I do not make up stories. My piroshka has nothing to do with this incident. So that's what happens. That's the truth behind my best friend's tragic death. I can't believe he died of a stupid cat. Oh my gosh, this makes me so mad. Miss Pavlova. I understand the difficult situation you found yourself in, and I do sympathize. But please remember this. A young man lost his life. If you're going to attempt to cover up your guilt with lies, then... Then no matter what the circumstances, I cannot forgive you. But... What are you talking about, Miss Mik Mikotoba? What lies? Miss Pavlova just confessed everything. It was just a series of unfortunate events. An accident. I'm no great detective like Mr. Sholmes. I don't have a gift for knowing the truth. But even I can see, that was not the truth. Don't you agree, Mr. Naruhodo? To be perfectly honest, yes. There's a discrepancy in Miss Pavlova's story, I'm sure of it. I just can't quite put my finger on it. I confess. I was intending to let Scotland and Yard deal with any outstanding issues on this matter. Oh. I am only present here for a very specific reason. The truth is, you, Mr. Naruhodo, are simply a distraction. A distraction? I do hope you've not been fighting your shackles too uncomfortable. Ah, not again. When did he do that? Especially as they're on your wrist as a result of my intervention. I was rather hoping I could resolve matters before we made our next port call. You were... You were, Mr. Sholmes? 
Yes, but I overlooked one important detail. The deceased young man was a very close companion of yours. Was he not? Yes. Cosmo was my closest friend. I owed him my freedom, even. In that case, we must follow this to its conclusion. No further distractions. You must uncover the real truth here, Mr. Naruhodo. Yes, whatever that may be. The key to this is the discrepancy in Miss Pavlova's story, I'm sure. If I can chase that down, maybe the truth will become clear. Kazuma! The truth about how you really died. About how that scene in your cabin really came to be. I I still don't believe he's I refuse to believe he's dead. Alright, I'll see what I can do. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Naruhodo. So then shall we begin? Yes. What should we what we should ponder first? Is the victim who lost his life in a cabin that was bolted shut from the inside? Was it truly an unfortunate accident? Or was it in fact no accident at all? Is this what- th blah, 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 blah. That is what we must establish in the first instance. But we've already established it, haven't we? The man tripped over the kitten that had climbed into his cabin via the ventilator. Tragic, yes, but still an accident. Mata! Mata! Wait, let's just take a step back. It doesn't make sense if that's what really happened, does it? I'm going to have to ask you to spell it out for me, I'm afraid. Yes, it's starting to take shape now. There's a clear contradiction between the facts and Miss Pavlova's story here. The evidence is right there in Cosmo's cabin. It's undeniable. His death couldn't possibly have been a mere accident. Really? Let us show our hands, Mr. Naruhodo. Time to present the evidence. The evidence that proves unequivocally that the victim's death was no mere accident. Ooh, gotta save. Okay. It was no mere accident. I mean, I'm guessing it's the Russian word on the floor. Right? Scuff mark made. Speckled bands. Um, I'm just gonna present this. I just noted a suit on your character picture. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I made it uh, to look like um, Rinosuke. Please be right. Hi. The truth is clearly recorded in this photographic print. There's no way Mr. Asogi could have uh, left this message on the floor. That script. It's Russian, isn't it? Indeed it is. The word written means wardrobe. I see what you mean. Most people would leave a dying message in their native language. Japanese in this case. But, but maybe he was studying Russian. It is a simple language. He, he could have picked it up very fast. That doesn't seem likely. That's actually not the point. It makes no difference whether he knew Russian or not. Sorry? What do you mean? Exactly what I said before. There's no way that Mr. Asagi could have left this mustard on the floor. And the reason why is clearly explained in here. Damage to the cervical uh, vertebrae resulting in instant death. Instant death! Ah! Which means, after the victim fell to the floor, he couldn't possibly have written anything. Because he was already dead. That's not the only reason either. There's something else we found in Mr. Asuki's cabin. A remnant of something that couldn't have possibly have been there if what Miss Pavlova has told us was true. What? So Susatu-san has noticed it too then. Putting this message on the floor aside, there's something else that gives the truth away. Another piece of evidence that proves this was no accident. In other words... Uh-huh? Uh... What could it be? I mean, we already talked about the post-mortem report. Um, if it was an accident, 
The bell could still be there. But she picked up the bell? Oh, I don't know. Wow, I don't know. I really don't know. Ooh. Something else? Rip Kazuma, the Yakuza finally got him. No, I love Kazuma! Wait. A remnant of something that couldn't possibly have been there if what Miss Pavlova told us was true. Is it- is it the broken bell because she had the other half thrown away in her- her wastebasket? This! This piece of broken glass next to the mark on the floor- Oh, thank god it is! But that's the glass bell the kitten had around its neck. We already know all about that. It was broken in half when the victim tripped over the cat and fell. So we already have a satisfactory explanation. Where's the flaw in that logic? Unfortunately, there's a very big flaw. A fatal flaw! What? If that's really what happens... Then how did one half of the bell end up back here in this cabin? Ah! Yes, remember that we found the other half of the glass and bell in that waste paper basket? Would you care to explain that, Miss Pavlova? Oh, no. Both these pieces of evidence clearly point to the same conclusion. That when Mr. Asugi died last night in his cabin, there was someone else in the room. And that same person deliberately arranged the scene to disguise the truth. In order to cover up his or her own guilt. Was that ringing any bells for you? Ha 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 ha. Yes, there was someone else present in Mr. Asugi's. You are wasting time. Someone else was there? Da, of course, we know this. What are you talking about? Bulkhead was bolted shut from inside. There was no way in or out. Oh, yes. And the only other person in cabin when young student died was you. But I was in a sealed closet, guys. It's true, I was in the cabin when it happened. You were shut inside the cabin wardrobe, to be precise about the details. But I don't know Russian! There's no way I could have left that message. Not would have. There's no way you could have left that message, to be precise about the details. Would you mind? Ah ha 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 ha! Forgive me, my dear fellow. As I was saying, the person in question who wrote the word, uh, the person in question wrote the word wardrobe in Russian on the floor. In an attempt to incriminate me for the crime, even- Whoa, I didn't mean to press that. Even though I had been asleep in there the entire time. And then, the same person picked up the broken glass bell that had fallen to the floor. For fear of it becoming evidence that it would show how Mr. Mr. Asuki really died. I guess you could call her a Bellland. What's a Bellland? What's a Bellland? I don't get it. I'm sorry. Well, why wouldn't this person have taken all the pieces of bell away? Leaving half behind was always going to raise questions. Yes, well, um... It was past one o'clock in the early hours of the morning. The cabin would have been quite dark. The single small lamp suspended in the ceiling would barely have cast any light onto the floor there. Little wonder then that the culprit failed to notice a fragment of the tiny item. You all suspect me, don't you? Seaman Strogonoff! Nina is woman of sea. She is daughter of strong sailor. Two years ago, they noticed her dancing skills and she went away to join ballet company. But before, she was dancer on the ship, a member of the ship's band. You do not accuse ship's angel of being criminal! Ah, uh, so that's it. You say that when young student died, Nina was there in his cabin. But that is not possible. I give my tooth! Hmm, well, this is almost interesting. And why would you give your tooth, pray? How can you be so sure? Hmm, you're a great detective, you should know. Look truth in eyes, cabin bulkhead was bolted shut from the inside. Nobody could go into cabin, not Nina, not anyone. Or do you want to tell me that killer can walk through locked doors? Yet, it's impossible. Ugh, he's right. Uh, she knows the layout? 
Mm-hmm. But wait, I've read about this in detective stories. Also, when the ship just stopped suddenly, but both the doors shut. So it's like, that's how you could have done it. You drug everyone up so that they don't notice that you stopped. And then you, yeah. People often tie thread around door latches so they can open and close them from the outside. Susato, that's what I suggested and you said I was crazy. Thread, are you stupid? These bulkheads are not barn doors. Certainly not. These are watertight doors as one would expect to find on any modern steamship. Constructed of heavy steel with not a gap in sight, no threads nor needles or magnets could have been used. No, no, of course not. I thought so too. But Mr. Naruhoro suggested it earlier, so... Susato-san, how could you shift it on to be like that? So seeing as Dorganov has a valid point, the cabin door couldn't have been bolted shut from the outside. Not necessarily. Oh, I didn't press that, eh. What? I put it to you that I could bolt this cabin door. Without laying a finger on it. And in this very cabin, we can see the traces of the method I have in mind haven't been used before. I don't believe it. Well, Mr. Naruhodo, I believe you're a blah blah, a way to shut the bowl of the cabin from the outside. One way does spring to mind, yes. Do you really know what Mr. Shons means, Mr. Naruhodo? Yes, and so should you. Because we've seen it happen. They're really dragging out this, like, boat stopping point. Indeed we have. So would you care to do the honors, Mr. Naruhodo? Point at the telling signs of the method that was used to slide the cabin door bolt across from the outside. Clearly, the books. Look at the bookcase there. See how all the books and things have toppled over. That must have happened when the ship made its emergency stop before. Yes, that's right. It's a very powerful vessel after all. When the engines are thrown into reverse, a violent jolt goes across the entire ship. Oh, I get it. GG's. Yeah, they dragged us out a lot. I know, it's just like, I know the answer. Just get to the point already, please. Any small objects that aren't fastened down are bound to fall over. I believe. Yes, it's what's known as the force of inertia acting on the objects. Is there nothing Susato-san doesn't know? Or isn't- or that isn't her- in her book, at least? Well, whatever it's called, it's the same force that pushed over those books on the bookcase. Also made something else in this cabin move. The bolt on the cabin door. Ah! It was very obvious just after the emergency stop that the ship made earlier. We had come into this cabin not long before, and we hadn't bolted the door. But then... Hello! Is that everyone there? Is that your sister? It's not sound like! It's Victor Hosomaga! Oh, yes! That's it! When the ship st st stopped suddenly, the bolt flew across and locked the door. Yes, it's made of metal, but it's small and light enough to be moved by the ship's sudden chain of speed. Or the force of ineptia, if you want to call it that. I'm not in love with those Phoenix right game. Mm. How to say the ship tilted so the bolt tilted with about 50 message boxes instead of one. I know, they're really milking it. Are, are you trying to say that last night, after Mr. Asuki was killed? Only thing I've napped around here are these people. <laughs> the SS Maria made an another emergency stop? When I woke up this morning and looked around the cabin, I thought it looked a little odd. All the books on the shelves had toppled over, and all the ornaments. It was almost as if someone had run their hand across the shelves and deliberately knocked everything over. Oh yes, I remember that. And I stood them all up again, didn't I? Then when we came into this cabin, we were surprised to see the same thing in here. All the books and everything had toppled over, just like in Mr. Asuki's cabin. Oh my! Do you have anything to say about the Swiss Papalova? Are you out of mind? You say Burya made an emergency stop. It does seem a little far-fetched. How could that possibly have happened? Unless you're saying that the culprit is actually someone from the engine room. Oh, it is simple enough. Hmm? Are you forgetting the button in the passageway outside? Used to trigger the emergency alarm. 
Oh, yes, of course. There was a notice, wasn't there? Telling you only to push the buttons in times of emergency. On dark nights when the fog is dense, the captain cannot afford to rely on the eyes of his lookout alone. Hence the placement of a number of buttons around the vessel to allow any crewman to raise the alarm. The sort of button one is almost compelled to press to satisfy one's curiosity. Wait! It, it was you?! When the button is pressed, two things happen in the interest of safety. The emergency alarm bell rings and the vessel comes to a complete stop. As indeed it did a little earlier today. Mr. Sholmes, surely it wasn't you who... As I always say, a button has but one purpose in life. To be pressed! Whatever the occasion! He sounds almost proud of himself. How dare you mess with ship! I report you to Captain, you are in much trouble now! Now, now, I'm sure all that can wait until later. Let us not overlook the fact that we have now learned a valuable lesson. When the vessel makes an emergency stop, the bolts on the cabin door slide closed. So, what we must now consider... Yes, it all comes down to one thing now. Last night, after what happened to Mr. Asugi... Did this ship make an emergency stop, or did it not? You are idiots! Berlia is a huge ship with many passengers! If we make an emergency stop, even in the middle of night, there will be chaos everywhere! What are your thoughts, Mr. Naruhodo? Well, it's certainly possible that some kind of emergency happened last night. We have evidence to support that idea. Really? What evidence, Mr. Naruhodo? The doctor can't resist either. <laughs> he's a detective, he's got a snoop! <laughs> Fascinating. Do show us, my good man. What evidence promotes the theory that some emergency gripped this vessel last night? Ba-boom! The ship's log! Seeming Stroganoff. It's your duty to patrol the first-class area of the ship, isn't that right? Da, that is correct. Why? And the ship's log here. This would be where you record the details of your duties? What are you doing with that? That is mine! Ah, oh, you rather carelessly left it atop the little makeshift bureau in the passageway out there. But as responsible passengers, we took it into our care with a mind to return it to you later. I left it there on purpose! That is where I put it always! The point is, looking at what you, you, you usually record, it's clear that under normal circumstances you write the phrase nothing to report every 30 minutes. But from 2 o'clock last night until first light this morning, there was nothing was recorded at all. Nothing recorded into the log? That is... Duh! Because nothing happened! But if nothing happened, you would normally write nothing to report, wouldn't you? Well, Indeed so, which tells us that shortly after 2 a.m., something happened here aboard the SS Burya. Something sufficiently significant to make you forget to fill in the ship's log, in fact. Are you suggesting that the ship really did make an emergency stop in the middle of the night? Stop talking rubbish! If I'm perfectly honest... Hmm? Huh? Game pay game Oh. <laughs> Sorry about that. I find that a little hard to believe myself. Oh? Why? Well, because if something as major as an emergency stop really had happened. Surely all of us would have noticed. That's very true. Thanks to the emergency stop we experienced earlier, we all know what it feels like now. The ship lurched so violently, and the alarm bell was so loud. I can't imagine that anybody would sleep through that, even if it happened in the dead of night. <laughs> Game ugly, so... Yep. Oh, my throat is dry. Oh. Well, no. That's... that's a good point. What's of the throbbing? Sorry? What do you mean? Your head, man. The throbbing of your head since this morning. We have all suffered with it. Ah! Oh, yes, I have had a headache, you're right. 
In fact, I haven't been feeling myself since I woke up today. Nor have I. My head has been feeling heavy ever since dawn. Yes, you've all been afflicted, haven't you? Just as I suspected. He's right. My head's been throbbing today, too. And since eating dinner yesterday evening, everything has felt sort of hazy. I can't really remember anything that happened after I climbed back inside the wardrobe. Throbby toes. No, I'm not throbbing. <laughs> now, the first thing I noticed this morning was the throbbing pain in my head. I had already been dragged out of the wardrobe. And had those handcuffs put on me by that point. Why did I wake up when all that was happening to me? Tell me, Mr. Nadohoro. You boarded this vessel as a stowaway, didn't you? Oh, um, well, yes. Sorry. The stowaway class of accommodation doesn't usually include meals. What did you survive on? Ah, uh, well, Kazuma looked after me. He was always happy to share his meals. So you enjoyed some of the whole roast chicken dish that was served yesterday evening, I take it. Yes, in fact, I had all of that. Kazuma wasn't fond of chicken. Oh, really? So the victim didn't eat any of the chicken at all? That's right, he didn't touch it. Is that relevant? My dear fellow, does that not strike you? Oh, Mr. Sholmes, do you mean to say... that there was something wrong with the chicken? I do. No, really? Is that really true? The meal prepared for the passengers last night had been tampered with. Tampered with by the addition of a soporific designed to induce a very decent slumber to those who consumed it. A sleeping drug? Do you mean. Whoever did this laced every meal with a sleeping drug so no one would notice the ship's emergency stop? Mr. Naruhoro, of course that's not what Mr. Sholmes means. What a far fetched idea! Precisely. Lacing every meal of every passenger on board with a superfluous drug would certainly be impossible. Unless, that is, every single member of the crew was a conspirator. What? Mr. Sholmes! Well, seamen? Uh. I'm sorry to say that any more deception in this matter will get you nowhere. If you refuse to talk, there would have been, uh... There would have to be an inquiry made through the shipping company, of course. And were that to happen, every member of the crew and the captain himself would be hauled over the coal ah, over the coals. For aiding and abetting a renegade. You killed a man! Please, no more. I will tell everything. Eh. I cannot make problems like this for everyone anymore. These crewmen are your former comrades, I believe. Yes, so when I decided to to run away, I asked them to help me. We all agreed to help, everyone together. She threw away everything, her fame in ballet, Mother Russia. We wanted to help our angel. I don't believe it. You are right. We put sleeping drug in chicken last night. Yes, I remember now. I did notice chewing on a lump of something strange and bitter at one point. Da, we could not make all drug, how you say, dissolve? Ugh, talk about heavy seasoning. At midnight, in waters near Shanghai, we brought our angel on board. She was helped by comrade on shore with small fishing boat. While all the passengers of the SS Burya slept soundly. Thanks to the almost magical effects of the slumber-inducing potion their evening meals had contained. I will tell everything for the third time, for real. It's like, can you just tell me the truth once? Come on, guys. So if that's what happens, the only people awake on the ship last night were the crew, people who dislike chicken, and... the newly boarded passenger, Miss Pavlova. And that means it would have been possible for you. You could have used the emergency stop trick to lock Kazuma's cabin door. But how does that make sense? Surely every cabin door would, would have ended up locked in that case, and there would have been complete chaos. 
Oh, I wouldn't say so. What? Ah, of course. Just like us, all the other passengers would have eaten their evening meal of the uh, chicken in their cabins. After which they would have been overwhelmed by tiredness because of the sleeping drug. Quite, and accordingly, all passengers were already in their cabins for the nights. Yes! The overwhelming majority of passengers would habitually sleep with their cabin doors bolted anyway. And so not one of them would have found it remarkable to find a door locked in the morning. In summary, in order to fasten the bolts of a single cabin door on the ship, the culprit brought the entire vessel to an emergency stop in the early hours of the morning. Thanks for killing my friend, guys. You have talked a long time and said many things. What this point? That I'm innocent and you killed my friend? The point is what I said earlier. There was somebody else present on the scene when the victim lost his life last night. Someone who left a message in Russian on the floor in an attempt to incriminate another. Someone who tried desperately to hide the broken fragments of glass that would reveal the culprit's identity. And someone who abused the ship's emergency stop procedure in order to lock a door. All told, a busy night. But, but... I... I don't know about any of this. I am just a little girl. You'd like to speak with your long English words and explain your clever ideas. But I am sailor, and sailors don't listen to long, boring stories. We don't believe. Sailors like me, we trust only what we see with our eyes. A laudable trait. What? I'm quite of the same disposition, my good man. Observation to me is everything. Mr. Naruhodo? Oh, yes? Do you hear it? That accusatory cry of guilt on the wind. Oh, make me that. Boo, make me that. Boo. Also, hey, Salk, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Thursday. What accusatory cry of guilt? Sorry, you've, you've lost me. Proof of involvement, man, but you can't hear such a call with your ears. No, you must hear it with your eyes, for observation is the basis of all deduction. What are you talking about? I believe the time has come. For one final logic and reasoning spectacular to expose the truth. Oh my gosh, I'm procrastinating on sleep. Go to sleep. Do not procrastinate on sleep. Sleep is so good. Go to sleep! <laughs> so, Mr. Naruhodo, your assistance, if you please. But what exactly, Mr. Sholmes? Both observation, my dear fellow, just as I said. One of these two prevar prevaricators? Observation? If you remember, Mr. Naruhodo, we know that somebody tried to fabricate evidence, don't we? By tampering with the scene of Mr. Asuki's death. What we're looking for is some trace of evidence that one of these two was there when it happened. Bossy toast. No, it's only 12.17 and I don't have to be up till 5. Do you hear yourself, Selk? You have to be up at 5. That is less than 5 hours of sleep for you. Go to sleep. Go to sleep now. I'll go to bed. No. Now. You start get getting ready for bed. You brush your teeth, change everything. Lie down in your bed so that starting at 12.30... You close your eyes, and you go to sleep. Ban Selk? No, I'll never ban him. But seriously, go to bed. I am laying down in bed. Okay, good. Now turn off whatever you're watching this on. Shut off every device. Close your eyes, and go to sleep. I don't care how young you are. You need to go to sleep. Especially if you're waking up in less than five hours, sir. <sighs> Precisely, you are delightfully quick to grasp my meaning. Alright, I'll see what I can see. So we're looking for a trace of evidence that shows someone else was there last night when Kazuma died. What well, suggests someone was there at the scene? His belly button! Um, left e Oh wait, I forgot I could like examine. Uh, can I examine his face? No. Sailor's hat? Have you noticed something significant about Seaman Storkanoff's hat? Hmm? Oh, no, sadly not. I was just thinking that if only we find it in Kazuma's cabin, it would all be so easy. That's true. A hat dropped at the scene would have been very conclusive to evidence. Ah, that's a point. 
I'm sure I saw your university uniform hat at the scene somewhere. That is not a point, at least not one I'd like you to make. Well, I really uh, intonated that weird. My 20s are when I'm supposed to be irresponsible, so that's what I'm doing. Oh my gosh. You know what? Once you hit 25, it's all gonna start going downhill. So if you're younger than 25, enjoy it while you can. But still, go to sleep. You need to um, hit him to make sleep a benefit. Ah, what? Oh, you need to hit REM to make sleep a benefit. But also sleeping earlier, it just makes you feel better. Like, my skin is clearing up because I'm sleeping earlier these days. It's really nice. I'm gonna examine her left ear. She has such petite ears among that beautiful hair, like little pink se uh, shells. Oh, what's that? There's something dangling from her ear. Ah, that's an earring. The crescent moon part looks as though it's made from wood. That's charming, isn't it? Women do seem to love adornments like that. In their hair, around their necks, on their fingers, and even hanging from their ears, it seems. Well, Julie is beautiful, Naruhoto san. Uh, chunky arms. <laughs> chunky arms! <laughs> Skinny toes. Oh, gross. The body makes repairs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He has arms like tree trunks, doesn't he? Hairy tree trunks. Yes, he certainly has sailor's arms. He's a man. He's. Ah, I can't read. He's a born man of the sea. Even if I had been awake, I couldn't have done anything about being dragged out of that wardrobe by this man. Naruhoda-san? Are you alright? You seem to be lost in thought. Oh, sorry. Blame those hairy tree trunks. <laughs> oh, so he likes buff men, huh? Okay, so there's nothing on their backs that show anything. Um... Oh, whoa! She doesn't have an earring here! She has such petite ears on my little black shells. Oh, what's that? There's something attached to her ear. It's a little earring. An earring, is it? It's really tiny. Perhaps part of it is missing. Maybe it broke off. So now all that's left is the clasp part that attaches to the ear. If that's the case, she doesn't appear to have noticed that it's broken. But we didn't find an earring in um in um his room. Or maybe we will find one. Okay, so I'm going to wait. I can't save. I can't save. Uh, I'm just gonna present it here then. Nope! Wrong! I know this is dainty jewelry wearing on your ears, Miss Pavlova. Where were you to find a piece of the earrings in Mr. Asuki's cabinet would prove beyond a doubt that you were there? Although, we haven't actually found anything yet, so... What precisely was your intention with that, Mr. Nadohoro? It's following the natural progression of deduction. Sometimes the truth hurts. Well, the truth is, you do not have a term for observation or deduction. Did that hurt? Yeah, it's a lot. I wouldn't worry much about losing life, but I care. If you game over, you can start over from the same scene, thankfully. Oh, that's good. How exactly are we supposed to show that someone else was there when Cosmo died? I can think of two possible ways. Either we find a trace of something that the person in question left behind at the scene, or if that's not possible, a trace of something that a person took away from the scene, that be that accidentally or deliberately. A trace of something someone took away. If you observe closely enough, I believe you will find examples of both. Give them a long, hard, uncompromising stare from all sides. That's my advice. Sailor's hat. There's nothing on his finger. Chunky arms. Chunky arms. Uh, her right ear has nothing. Okay. Um, belly button. Nothing on her face. Uh, are you tick? Uh, ink stain. <laughs> Seaman Stroganoff. You seem to have quite a large purple stain on the back of your white uniform there. Eh? Ah, yes, I am. Um, I don't know where the dirt comes from. So nothing in particular comes to mind about the stain. What are you trying to say? It would appear that the significance of the stain has escaped your attention, Seaman. Allow us to make a play. It's a very large purple stain on the back of Seaman Stroganoff's uniform. And I think what made it is clear. Indeed it is. So, Mr. Narahoda, present the evidence that proves it. 
My pleasure. Alrighty then. The evidence that proves what that stain on the back of Seaman Stroganoff's uniform really is... The picture! Hi. Yes, it's this photograph and the ink it shows. That's what caused the stain on your uniform. Ink? A rather unusual color of ink. Purple. Ah! Ah, oh, the petty drops at last. Now you see the significance. The Russian word on the floor next to the victim's body was written in purple ink. And the stain on the back of your uniform is ink of exactly the same color. That was Rinosuke, whoops. If the ink had been dry, it couldn't possibly have stained your uniform in that way. Which means... You must have been present in the cabin in the moments immediately after the ink was spilt. Alright, yes. It was me. I did it. Everything. I arranged everything in Dead Student's cabin to make it look like Wardrobe Man did it. Then I pushed button to make Burlio do emergency stop and bolt cabin door short. I did everything so no one would suspect our angel. Biff, please. Don't worry, Angel. Let me do talking. It was after one in the morning. I was on duty, patrolling passageway. Then our angel came to me. She was white like sheet. Biff, please, you must help me. I went with her. The door to cabin number one was open. When I looked inside, I saw student boy on floor. What? What happened there? Please, don't tell anyone. My little one, my little furry friend. Everything that happened in cabin is like Angel told you. The kitten escaped through the ventilator into Mr. Asuki's cabin. Then he tripped over it and broke his neck when he fell to the floor. Well, that's Rudosuke. Then he tripped over it and broke his neck when he fell to the floor? Yes, that is right. So after the incident when the cat ran away, Miss Pavlova then visited the cabin next to hers? Only to find its occupant lying and lifeless on the floor. She said she was worried but she heard sound of something falling on floor. That's when she went to look. No, Angel? The door was not locked. So she opened to look and you already know what happened after. There's just one thing if you wouldn't mind. What? When you went to Mr. Asuki's cabin, Miss Pavlova, was he already dead? Why? I already told you. When Nina opened door of student's cabin and looked inside, I was asking Miss Pavlova. Well, Miss Pavlova? Yeah. Oh. Yes. That is right. I saw him. It was dark and he was wearing black, but he was on the floor, not moving. I was scared. I understand. And I believe you. So is that finally it now? Have we discovered the real truth about Kazuma's death at last? Ah, something very nearly slipped my mind. Oh, Mr. Sholmes? This photograph? Yes, I took this myself, you know. The cause of death was a broken neck, therefore the victim died instantly. And the unfortunate incident that precipitated these events, a kitten on which the victim stumbled. However, if those are the facts, there is one particular area in this photograph that seems to me somewhat unnatural. What do you mean, unnatural? What are your thoughts on the matter, Mr. Naruhodo? Hmm? Oh, well... If Kazuma tripped and fell, and by some terrible stroke of bad luck broke his neck, which part of this photographic print seems unnatural? His neck? Cause it doesn't look terribly broken? I can save. <laughs> Let me save. Uh, I'm gonna present this. Hi! It must be here, surely. 
Allow me to offer you a piece of advice regarding the pursuit of detection, my dear fellow. When noting a crucial point, it can be helpful to keep your eyes open. Um, they were open. And it can be equally helpful to use them. Sorry, I'll try that. I think it's plain what Mr. Sholmes means by unnatural, isn't it? The word written in a foreign language underneath his fingertips, surely. That particular crass detail was orchestrated by the culprit. No, I mean to identify another point. Imagine, if you will, losing your footing yourself. Would you land as the victim has? What of your hands? You look like the sort of fellow who stumbles with some regularity. This should be an easy task. Why do I? If Cosmo tripped and fell, I told him to broke his neck. Which part of this photograph seems... <laughs> the bandana! <laughs> Because it's not flowing in the wind anymore? No, but really, if his neck was... Because this doesn't look like his neck is broken, so... Is it... I mean, but this part, having his finger stick out, was orchestrated. So that it could look like he wrote something. What am I... Is it his arm? Kirby, is it his arm? A fist? Oh, yeah, I'm gonna try that. Alright, if he really fell to, to an unfortunate accident, then this fist just doesn't seem quite right. You're right, Smooth! It is the fist! The exact same thought occurred to me. In a fall, one's instinct is to open the palms flat. So <laughs> Yet here we see the victim with his left hand tightly balled into a fist. Almost, you might say. As though he were gripping something. What do you mean? Simply that I took the liberty of investigating the victim's fist a short while ago. You did? And what, pray, do you imagine I found there, my dear fellow? Mr. Sholmes, show us, please! Why, of course, my dear madam. Would I keep you in suspense? Her earring. This is what I found. Oh, a crescent moon with a little gemstone in the middle. Yes, you're right. A crescent moon. It's very pretty, wouldn't you say? Hmm, it does us nothing. I'm not so sure. That crescent moon looks... It looks familiar somehow. I'm sure I've seen it somewhere before. Observation, Mr. Naruhuru, that is the key. What? The truth is now tantalizingly close. How did that crescent moon come to be in Kasuma's clenched fist? This is the final clue, the last piece of the puzzle. Ask yourself, what does this little crescent moon mean? What significance has it? And observe, find the answer with your own eyes. Where did the crescent moon come from? Can I... Here, here, yeah. Miss Pavlova, I noticed that on your ear. Even though you have a metal earring, the decorative part of it seems to be missing. The little link holding onto it must have broken it, I suppose. Eh, what? But looking at your other ear, I notice a crescent moon. Ah! I don't believe it! Now, the missing crescent moon was found in the victim's clenched fist. Clearly, there is only one logical conclusion. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Naruhodo? Yes. Miss Pavlova, Mr. Asuki must have grasped that crescent moon and pulled it from your ear. Perhaps just moments before he fell to the floor. In other words, last night in Mr. Asuki's cabin, you witnessed the moment when the victim fell with your own eyes. In fact, you were quite literally at arm's length from him. But then the question is, why did Mr. Asugi do that? Why did he pull your earring from your ear and hold it in his clenched fist during his final moments? Oh no... Angel? You did kill him. No one can protect you now. Please, Miss Pavlova, tell us the truth. Last night. What did you do to Kazuma? Ah! 
Wow, wow. No, I really don't want Cosmo to be dead! Did she push him? When I think about everything that happened yesterday, it... it was too much. Running away, the fishing boat in the middle of the night, trying to climb up onto this huge ship. And then... When I was at... Uh, when I was at last in this cabin and I could relax after this horrible long day. Meow! Darka, wait! I couldn't believe it when she disappeared through the, the ventilator. I tried to call her with a little whistle. I, I tried waving her favorite toy. But nothing worked. Darka would not come back. Punk. What are you doing here at this time of night, Inspector? Oh, he thought it was a Hosonaga, but it was Kazuma! Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was a friend of mine. The young man from your country. He was very polite and kind. He helped me to find Darka and he promised not to tell anyone. But then, when I had my friend in my arms again and I was going to leave the man's cabin... Just a moment. Sorry, but... Oh, yes? I'm sure I know your face. I've seen you somewhere before. Ah. Ah, of course. You're Nikolina Pavlova, aren't you? The Russian ballerina. That's why... That's why the cat had a bell on the collar. Because of Pavlova. Oh! Mansville. No, cuz I don't want him to be dead. How's it going? Hey, Ta Taste, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Thursday. It's going well. I'm sad that Kazuma is supposedly dead. I refuse to believe in my heart that he's dead. I think he's still alive. Huh? No, I, I don't know that name. My heart nearly stopped when he said that. He knew who I was. How could this man from a land in the faraway east know a Russian ballerina? Because he reads the newspaper. Yes, I saw your performance in Japan. The beauty of the ballet made a deep impression on me. But what are you doing on the ship? I'm sure I read that your ballet company was performing in Shanghai at the moment. I can't fool him. I have to tell him the truth and hope he doesn't tell anyone. I have no other choice. Hmm, I see. So you've run away. Please, please keep my secret. Don't tell anyone. Give me a moment. I could use another opinion here. He's going to pull the cord. He's going to tell the captain. Why did I think I could trust him? He was going to ask me in the closet. Then it happens. Everything at once. It was only a second, but it felt like forever. Wait, I shouted, and then... Tarka jumped out of my arms and down the young man's feet. And... As he turned around to look at me. I pushed him. She c I'm so mad at her. I don't even know why. I don't know why I did it. I, I was just so scared. And I have to stop him from telling anyone about me. And that's when you went to fetch help? From Seaman Stroganov, who was on duty out in the passageway? I heard Nina cry out and thud on floor, so I ran to her. She was standing at cabin door, shaking like leaf. She looked at me and said, Help me, Beef. If they find out, I will be... Please, I have nowhere to go. But if the whole crew knew her, and even the captain knew her. Why was she so afraid that he was going to tell the captain if the captain already knows who she is and is helping her? This is stupid. So you decide to help. And that's when you arrange things in Cosmo's cabin to make it look like I did it. So that no one would suspect the passenger in the cabin next door. I love the voices. I try. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. I went into cabin and I looked around to make sure there was nothing to show Nina was there. 
And then I found Stowaway. In wardrobe. Still sleeping. Right. That's when he found me. So he worked out a plan to lay the blame on the stowaway. I closed wardrobe doors and put back strange paper sign. Luckily for me, that's the only reason Susoto-san started to believe me when I said I was innocent. Uh, don't use logic in a Phoenix Wright game. Yeah, I know, but oh, I'm s <laughs> I dragged young man's body to a good place and used ink that was spilling to write on floor. I wrote blah, 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 so that person who found him would look inside wardrobe and find stowaway. And tell me, what of the glass bell? It was by my feet, so I picked it up. I see. But it was dark in the cabin. I didn't notice the other half. Then Angel went back to her cabin, and I finished the job. By pressing the emergency alarm button in the passageway. Yes. Accordingly, the SS Beria did indeed come to an emergency halt a little after 2 a.m., thus enticing the bolt on the cabin door to slide shut, creating the locked room mystery. There's still one thing I don't understand, Miss Pavlova. What? Well, you said that you told Cosmo about the fact that you'd run away from your homeland. And it's because you were worried he was going to tell the captain that you pushed him. Isn't that right? Yes. But even if he had pulled the bell cord and called for the captain of the ship... Aren't you friends with every member of the crew? Why would that have been a problem? It was what he said first that made me scared. What he said first? What are you doing here at this time of night, Inspector? Oh, Inspector. Oh. I'm sorry, I thought it was a friend of mine. He said an inspector was his friend. Ah, uh, yes, meaning me. He was supposed to be acting as bodyguard. I thought that if the police knew about me, they would arrest me. So before he could pull the bell cord, I... I... May I stop you a moment, please, Miss Pavlova? It just doesn't seem to make sense. I mean, was Mr. Asuki really going to pull the bell cord? I don't know. What? What do you think, Mr. Naruhodo? Well, I'm not Cosmo, so I can't know for certain, but... He was a man of his word. If he told you he wouldn't give your secret away, then he wouldn't have done. No, he... he was walking over to it! He was going to pull the cord! He was going to make them send me back! I hate you, girl. I hate her so much. <laughs> well, Mr. Naruhodo... The day's work is not done yet, it seems. There is one more deduction to make. What? Another deduction? Yes, what action was the victim really about to take at that moment? He was gonna open the wardrobe to ask me what I thought. Can we determine whether the young man's gaze was directed? <sighs> Dude, same. Ugh. First, consider the victim's location within his cabin. That's easy, I remember every detail of that room. I mean, yes, I spent quite a lot of time in the wardrobe, but still. That cabin has been my home this entire voyage. So this is how the cabin looked last night when Miss Pavlova visited Kazuma-sama? Yes, it's exactly how it was. Are you ready then, Mr. Naruhodo? Yes, if there's one thing I've learned today, it's that a simple gaze can reveal all manner of truths. And not only that, in order to draw the right conclusion, you can't afford to be out by even a little bit when you're following the gaze to where it lands. So, when he turned away from Miss Pavlova, what exactly was Kazuma looking at? <laughs> I'm passing out, Grace Beam. Thank you, Taste. Have a good night! Thanks for joining! Yeah, this music is nice. Considering everything that happened last night, certainly it may have looked as though Kazuma was going to ring the bell cord. Yes, however... What is directly beside the bell cord? The wardrobe. The wardrobe? And more importantly, what was inside the wardrobe? 
the man's great friend, sleeping soundly. Ah! Miss Pavlova, please think back very carefully. What were Mr. Asuki's exact words last night? Give me a moment. I can use another opinion here. Another opinion? Yes, but not from a member of the crew. No, Mr. Asuki intended to consult his close friend on the matter. To see if, between them, they might be able to help in some way, no doubt. Oh, no. You killed a man because you're stupid. Sadly, we can't know the truth for certain now. It's too late for that. But I wish you had made sure of what Mr. Asuki was looking at. Things may have ended di very differently if you had. Miss Pavlova? I want to thank you for finally admitting the truth. But unfortunately, the truth is a man lost his life because of what you did, and that will never change. I hope you'll never forget that! You killed a man because I you suck. I'm sorry. Really, I'm so, so sorry. Not sorry enough! What have I done? You killed a man, that's what you did! And so, at long last, the mystery surrounding the tragic accident on the SS Buria was finally laid to rest. Oh, so no trials for this one, it's just all the deductions. That's cool! What will happen to Miss Pavlova now, then? Once we reach Great Britain, she'll be handed over to the British police at Scotland Yard. What about the fact she ran away from Russia? Won't the Russians try to re repatriate her? Apparently, the English detective can speak to the immigration office and sort that all, all out. Mr. Sholmes can do that? So she won't be going back to Russia, then? No, I don't think so. Even if she wanted to return in the future, I doubt she would be able to. She ran away, so now she's in exile for life. I see. I'm sorry. Is he even strong enough? I wanted to help our angel, no matter what. But I didn't think about you, about how you lost good friends. I will go with Nina. I will give myself to British police. That's kind of you. In the meantime, thank you for letting me go free again. Cosmo's death feels like such a waste, but... Well, do what you can for Miss Pavlova, won't you? Duh. And we still never found the cat, so... She has to face her crime, yeah, exactly. Well, I'm afraid you need to pack now. We're due to arrive in Hong Kong tomorrow. As much as it pains me, I'm going to have to hand you back uh, over to the council to arrange your passage back to Japan. Yes, I did stow away after all. I couldn't really expect any different. So, you should get back to your cabin now. It looks like my study tour to Great Britain is over before it's even begun, then. To think that only days ago, Kazuma and I were laughing together about how we tear up the streets of London. That seems like a distant memory now. Oh, what's that? Is it someone weeping? Aw, oh, did she like him? Oh, Hosonaga isn't bruised anymore. Oh, is he? I didn't notice. 10 years of community service? Uh, how about 20 years of community service? susata san Naruhara-san, I, I didn't know you had returned. Oh, um, well, I haven't been back long. Inspector Hosonaga just told me I should pack. You know, ready to leave the ship tomorrow and all that. I still can't believe this has happened. I can't believe someone's life can be over just like that. Susato-san. He had such grand ideas for this visit to Great Britain. So many dreams. And now they've been cruelly taken away. Just as he has. I thought I could never forgive the person responsible. But now... Now we know the truth, that it was just an accident. Just a silly series of mishaps. 
It's too much, Naruhoro-san. It's just too much. Yes, I know. I wish there was something I could say. Oh, Hos yeah, he isn't bruised anymore. She really wanted Kazuma's sword. <laughs> I agree, I don't think she should get prison time. I think prison should be for reform. Mm -hmm. It should. And that's why she does community service instead of going to prison. Inspector. My duty was to see Asuki's son safely to Great Britain. But I failed. And it caused to his two closest friends great pain and suffering as a result. I've let everyone down. And I will do anything to make up for my terrible blunder. Nobody blames you, Inspector. Yeah, seriously, you were drugged and knocked out too. Wait, why do I have cuffs again? Ah ha 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 ha. Surprised, Mr. Naruhodu? What is the meaning of this? Oh, a trifling matter. Simply that in my head, I think I shall always picture you wearing those shackles. Without them, the balance seems all wrong. It's distracting. Sorry. So I decided to restore them. For all time's sake, shall we say? You are a stowaway after all. <laughs> Thinks this is funny? Mr. Sholmes. We do appreciate all your assistance. I'd like to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Not at all, not at all. Although it's a little late, may I offer my sincere condolences. The loss of your companion is truly heartrending. I hope that you will be able to fulfill some of his aspirations in his honor. I'm afraid that won't be possible. We shall be disembarking at the next port in Hong Kong. We have to return to Japan and make a full report about everything that's happened. What? Wait a minute! It's just me that has to go back, isn't it? I mean, I was a stowaway. The terms of the study tour were no negotiated by the Department of Justice in both Great Britain and Japan. It was to be one lawyer and one assistant. Was to be? In the light of Mr. Asugi's unfortunate death, I'm afraid the study tour can no longer go ahead. Oh no, I don't care for me, but... Poor Susato-san. My dear fellows, the majority of problems have an extremely simple solution, you know? All you require is one lawyer, and the study tour can continue, surely. But there's no one else with the necessary qualifications, Mr. Sholmes. We know of no other lawyer. Qualifications, you say? Any qualifications obtained in your own country will be of little value in Great Britain, I'm afraid. Oh, but... But anyway, the voyage to London still promises a good month of time. Ample opportunity, I would say, to find yourselves another suitable lawyer. Yes. Um, Miss Susato? Yes? Do you think perhaps I might be able to do it? <gasps> but you're not a lawyer, Mr. Naruhodo. Oh, unless... Are you studying it now? No, I'm not, but... I'm sorry, in that case, I don't think there's even a chance it could work. But, as I said, there's still more than a month before we reach England's shores. Isn't that right, Mr. Naruhodo? Yes, I have a month in which to study, to learn what I must become to become a lawyer in Great Britain. Mr. Naruhodo? That's ridiculous. Are you seriously suggesting to anybody could learn all of that in just 40 days? There's only one way to find out. I would work my fingers to the bone, Inspector, every single day. Will you let me try? And if, by the time we reach Great Britain, I haven't learned enough to be recognized as a lawyer, I'll take whatever punishment is deemed appropriate. But, but why put yourself in such a difficult position? For Kazuma. He said that there was something he had to do in Great Britain, and that he would sacrifice anything to make it happen. He was passionate about it. I can't let all that passion just come to nothing. And anyway, it's for my own benefit too. I will become a lawyer. I have to. What do you say, Mr. Sato? Oh, Kazuma really isn't coming back. It's just gonna be her assisting me. I think it's a wonderful idea. 
Thank you. So, what does our bespectacled inspector friend say? Are you serious? One lawyer and one assistant. The numbers are blah blah blah. No, 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 it's madness! Yet yeah, fascinating, wouldn't you agree? Fascinating. Duty and rules are the dual routine of existence that we all abhor. Give us interest, give us fascination. Speak for yourself. Besides, qualifications are no measure of a man. What matters is his character, no? And you've witnessed ample evidence of this man's exemplary character today with your own eyes. From the early hours of this morning until this very moment now. Despite contending with passing of his close companion, and despite the accusation of guilt, this man has shown resourcefulness, blah, resourcefulness, intelligence, and above all, courage. Ooh, posture check. Hugs, thank you. Very well. I'll think of a clever way to word my report to the Department of Justice. Inspector! After all, I did just make a promise, didn't I? I said that I'd do anything at all to make up for my shortcomings here. Oh, thank you, Inspector. If you'll excuse me, I must pay a visit to the captain's quarters, I think. I need to discuss what to do next and how to best make my report. Thanks for the hugs! Are you really prepared to attempt this, Mr. Nadahodo? Yes, I'm going to try. I wonder, would you consider teaching me what I need to know? Everything about being a lawyer? I would be delighted to help you. I am a judicial assistant after all. Thank you. And, Mr. Naruhodo? I'd like you to take charge of this. What? Me? Are you sure? I'm sure it's what Kazuma-sama would have wanted. Its name is Karuma. It's a great sword that's been in the Asuki clan for generations. Very well, I accept. I'll treasure it always. So then, Mr. Sato. It seems we'll be working together for some time to come yet. It will be an honor, Mr. Naruhodo. And for the next 40 days, I shan't grant you a single minute of freedom. We shall fill every spare moment with study. Yes, that's exactly what I need. But before we begin, I have an earnest favor to ask of you two. Goodness, what is it? Please throw me to the ground. Three times! What? I should never have doubted you. You were Kazuma-sama's closest friends. Of course you would never have done anything to, uh, anything to hurt him. That should have been obvious to me from the start. Yes, it should have. <laughs> but I allowed suspicion to get the better of me. And no matter how upset I was feeling, it was completely unforgivable behavior. No, no, you were in shock. You just found a- Oh, that just automatically skipped. I couldn't do anything. No, I won't let you make excuses for me. Wait, I could just go back and read it. You just found about me uh, being a stowaway, and the door was locked from the inside. Whatever the circumstances, I should never have thrown you, and not just once, but five times. Huh, that number keeps creeping up, good, doesn't it? Please, you must. Just take hold of me and throw me. Do it. Don't even think about it. No, no, no. I don't even know how. I've never thrown anyone in my life. Very wise, Mr. Narahodo. It isn't a skill one acquires without considerable training. Oh, Mr. Sholmes. I observed your throwing technique several times with great interest. I confess I was most impressed. What did he see that? I presume that would be a form of Japanese wrestling? Oh, well, in a way, it's not wrestling, but my own interpretation of an ancient Jujutsu technique. Jujutsu Kaisen! Uh, apparently it's called the Susato Takedown. It leaves your head swimming, believe me. Hmm, how beguiling. And if she dies, that would... Be worse. <laughs> I am a practitioner of the combative arts myself. I am somewhat accomplished boxer. There he goes, dancing around again. I wonder if you'd be so kind as to instruct me on the technique of your arresting throw. 
Yes, I'd be honored. No, no, this is not Dally. Demonstrate, my dear madam. And she's gonna throw me. Oh, of, of course. Are you ready, Mr. Narahodo? Sorry? Hiya! Yeah, she's gonna throw me. As you can see, you throw from the abdomen. Oh yes, arresting indeed. And that is what you term the Susato takedown, is it? Actually, no. That was a Susato squash. In my groggy state of consciousness, a scene from an evening recently spent with Kazuma flickered into my mind. How long is this ending taking? Holy crap, I've been streaming for two and a half hours. My throat is killing me. Karuma? Oh wait, this is a flashback. I have to read in silly voices. Oh, this song! That's right, it's a prize sword that's been passed down through generations of the Asoki clan. I can't believe you managed to get permission to bring it with you. I mean, taking a katana on a study tour is more than a little regular, surely? A Japanese man sword is a sword, you know, Sky. I can't pick part of from my katana. Kadaba guides me. I truly believe that. So his name compels its will to slice evil in two, not that you would need much compelling. On that subject. There's something very important I have to do in Great Britain. And I'll sacrifice anything to make it happen. I'd appreciate you seeing it through with me. Of, of course I will. Whatever it is, I'll see you through it to the end with you. I knew you wouldn't let me down. I love you, Kazuma. <laughs> that important thing you had to do. I still don't know what it was. I'm still... Okay, in original Phoenix, right? What happened with Mia is just like, damn, that sucks, but that was related to a case. And so it's just like... Well, that sucks. Also, she could still be channeled through Maya to show up, but Kazuma is just gone, and I will never see him again, and it... Ugh. But I'm going to see the place for myself and work it out. In Great Britain's capital, London. <sighs> oh my gosh, Nicolina, I, I can't believe you. I can't believe you. You killed Kazuma for your own stupid stupidness. Okay, um, well, time to stream chapter three? Not tonight. I've been streaming for two and a half hours and my throat is killing me. So, um, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, most likely next time I'll stream will be a uh, Tuesday night. I don't know if I could possibly do Sunday. I don't know. Maybe, probably not. But we'll just see what happens. But yeah, wow. This chapter was pretty fun because I like the deducing part. It's a lot better than the trials when you're just like, ah, evidence, oh no, like I brought up this logic and now you're bringing up this logic and... But the deducing is fun. You gotta get on 14, yeah, I know. But probably not today because I am a little tired. Thank that was, a, that was a fun night. Yeah, I had a lot of fun with this too. Thank you all for sticking around. Um, But yeah, my daughter's killing me and I need to go. You need to play this game. I know, I know, I just... Uh, I, I'm really liking this game so far a lot. The graphics are beautiful, the uh, music is beautiful, Kazuma's beautiful, but sadly he's dead. But yeah, uh, let's start case three on Tuesday. I really need to stop talking, my door hurts. So thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Stay toasty, have a good night, everyone. Bye-bye.